to the breaking developments right now on the Seminole murders. Our team of reporters uncovering crucial new clues that officers found as they arrested the man they say is responsible for murdering four random innocent people. Dia. And James, they have families in that neighborhood. They can rest a whole lot easier right now. We just got this mugshot. This one right here this morning, moments after police locked him up in jail just a few hours ago. I want to get right to ABC Action News reporter Lauren St. Germain. She is live right now with the new details about what police have found since you went to bed last night. Good morning, Lauren. What's the new information? Good morning, morning, James and Dia. A lot of new, really intriguing information. Something that really stuck out in that arrest affidavit was the suspected killer, Howell Donaldson, said that he had no affiliation with Seminole Heights, no association with that location. And this is completely different than what Tampa police had been saying for a while because they thought that the killer was from the area and really knew the area. So interesting piece of information right there. Let's go to some video right now. This is authorities bringing Howell Donaldson Donaldson from Tampa Police Headquarters to the Hillsborough County Jail where he is right now. They questioned him for hours last night and then they decided they had enough evidence to charge him with all four murders, murders that happened in Seminole Heights within the past two months. We also watched yesterday as officers looked through clothing. That clothing was similar to the clothing seen on the person in those two surveillance videos. In the affidavit, we also learned that one piece of the clothing, clothing also had a blood stain on it. We learned that he bought a 20 box of ammunition and picked up the gun that he purchased on October 7th. The homicide started on October 9th. The affidavit also says casings investigators found in the first three murders were fired from the same weapon. We do expect Tampa police to hold another press conference at some point this morning, giving us more information. In particular, we're pretty curious about a motive. Now, coming up. And this morning, we're learning more about the Seminole Heights killer arrested here at the McDonald's in Ybor City. ABC Action News reporter Ashley Yor is live out there right now. Ashley, we're learning some intimate new details about uh, Donaldson from his former co-workers at that McDonald's. That's right, Dia. Good morning. And, you know, co-workers out here, they're saying that Donaldson actually worked here at this McDonald's and he spooked other employees they're saying he wasn't part of their work family. But this is exclusive video of 24 year old Howell Donaldson. One employee says yesterday the suspect handed off a loaded gun to a manager. Then that manager flagged down a police officer who was inside the McDonald's. Now the employee we spoke with says she saw a sketch of the killer and kept thinking it was Donaldson. She says in the past she even teased Donaldson about his resemblance to the Seminole Heights killer. I told him that you look like a killer. And he said, do I really? I said, yeah. You know, and I was just saying that because I've been saying stuff. I don't know why. I've just been digging at him, but he ain't do nothing to me. But he gave me that look like, don't mess with me. And that employee tells us she's thankful there was an officer inside the McDonald's and that they're all okay. Coming up in the next half hour, what that employee says about the moment police showed her a photo of the suspect without any facial hair. Reporting live here in Ybor City, I'm Ashley Yor, ABC Action News. Thank you, Ashley. And at this moment, just a wave of emotions is flooding through the families of these four murder victims. Yeah, it is bittersweet for them. Melissa Mahadeo joins us now from East Seminole Heights this morning. Melissa, of course, this is the moment that those victims, families, and of course, the whole neighborhood has been waiting so long for. Yeah, Dean and James, these families have been counting the days. They've been holding their breath. They've been pacing back and forth. And finally, just now, they can finally just take a second and let this all soak in. Now, Monica Hoffa's uncle is one of those individuals. He was at the press conference last night and we spoke with him. She was the second victim killed in these murders, killed on October 11th. For more than a month, Robert Hoffa tells us he's been praying, he's been speaking out, he's been sporting a hat with Monica's name, doing whatever he could to bring awareness to finding his niece's killer. He says these trying times have also brought about a closeness and a bond between the families and officers. Yes, I feel like we're family now. I mean, we've been together for 51 days now, thick, through thick and thin, and, and I'm supporting them 100% on everything they did. I appreciate everything and all their time that they've spent away from their families. The family creating this memorial to remember Monica, but they're doing even more than that. They say they plan to set up a scholarship fund for the deaf in Monica's name as well. We'll keep you posted on that. For right now, I'm Melissa Mahadeo, ABC Action News.
OK, Melissa, here's a timeline. Let's take you through the last 51 days that brought police to this arrest. We start on October 9th. 22 year old Benjamin Mitchell was shot at a bus stop. Then just two days later, 32 year old Monica Hoffa shot and killed while walking to a friend's house. The following week, October 19th, 20 year old Anthony Naboa is killed after getting off at the wrong bus stop. And two weeks ago on November 14th, 60 year old Ronald Felton was shot and killed while walking to his church to prepare meals for the homeless. And that brings us to just hours ago when police announced the arrest of Hal Donaldson III. And there's still a lot. It is November 28th, 2017, it's 4.30 p.m. We're here at the uh, police headquarters. Um, my name is Kenny Nightlinger, Detective with Tampa Police. This is Detective Austin Hill, and we are here with Sir Vicky State. Hal Donaldson. And your date of birth, Mr. Donaldson? 01 And we were just talking before we went on record. I see you have a McDonald's name tag, Trey, T R A I. You said that was a nickname because you're third generation. Yes, yes. And you might be some basketball reference to yes, as well. Yes, And just to satisfy my curiosity, um, somebody said you played basketball for TC? Yeah, I went to Tampa Catholic, you know, uh, played ball for them. Um, in high school. Are you playing out in St. John's? Uh, you not anymore. Uh, I plan on going further with my basketball career. At St. John's? Uh, no, actually professionally. Okay. Could yeah. I get to join the amateur like, yeah. European circuit? And exactly. then go, okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm a, I'm a college basketball fan, so I'm curious now. Okay. Did you play at all at St. John's yeah, or were you trying on uh -huh. St. John's? I played two years at St. John's. Who did you play for there? Was Lavin still there? Uh, Lavin, when, when I came there, Lavin had prostate cancer. Um, but he was the head coach at the time. Okay. The assistant coach did did all the X's and O's. Mike Dunlap, he's yeah. the uh, head coach at um, LMU right now, okay. Loyola Marymount. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so he he was the man. Um, okay. Did he recruit? Is he the one who recruited you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not Dunlap, but I mean Lab. Uh, Lab. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I right. walked on, but oh, okay. I, I, I got um, friends that that came that went to St. John's that told me to go to St. John's. So, okay. Yeah, it, it, it's you know. Do you small, like an invitation to walk on? Right, right, gotcha. right, right. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got to know because I mean, you know, uh, Lavin. Well, right, is right, he right. is he the real deal? Is he uh, Lavin? Is right. he? I mean, I know you he experienced an illness when you were there, but I mean, is that the is that a real deal program? Those guys it is. on the up and up. It's definitely a real real deal program now that Mullen's there. Okay. Yeah. Is that to go? Did Chris Mullins go over for uh, Lavin? Yeah. Okay. Um, Mullins used to play there, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Mullen was. Uh, yeah, he, he he played there. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So what do you I mean? What do you make of all the stuff that's going on now with some of the you know Lavin's you know cronies? Uh, do you think that I means there is there another side of college basketball that the public doesn't see? I mean, you would have the inside information. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> keep in mind, none of this is going to be used for any further <laughs> endeavor. <laughs> Absolutely. You think it's a, it's definitely some shady stuff going on, huh? Yeah. Okay. Always. Uh, I mean, I think everybody expects that. But mm -hmm. all right. Um, did you play? I mean, did you play minutes? Oh, uh, I didn't. Time? I didn't. It just, it, it was, it was, uh, it was just complicated. But okay. everything's coming full circle for me now. Just, okay. You know, just continue to learn some things that I didn't know about. Some things that you know I still don't know about. But some things that I got to do. But everything is. Uh, it seems to be coming together for you. You mean yeah, yeah, personally, okay. individually. Per, per, now, is that for your personal life, or is that talking about your professional life? Uh, both. both, both. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. How how long had you been up uh, at St. John's? I was up back? at St. John's five years. And you just came back just recently? Uh, I uh, came back and I left, but yeah, just came back recently, not too long ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, you said you're staying in town and country with your mom and your dad. That's you have your brothers and sisters over there. Brother. Brother, huh? okay. Does he play basketball too? He does. Uh, and what position are you? Point guard. Because I mean, you're not. What are you? Six two? Uh, five eleven. No shoes, but they'll list me at six one. Six one. Are you five eleven? No. Yeah, yeah. Are you? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm five, about six foot. I would easily give you six foot. Yeah. Either that or I'm not giving myself five ten. Then I got to give up on that. Yeah. All right. So five eleven, six one. Though in the programs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, right. So you're uh, you're you're ball handler then. Yes. All right. Um, a TC. Obviously the same thing? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. When did you play there? Uh, 07, 08, 08, 09, and then I transferred to Plant. Oh, okay, so you finished up at Plant? No, I finished up at Alonzo. Okay, so you went to Plant yeah. and then went to Alonzo? Uh-huh. Okay, yeah. all right. And you play at all, all schools or do you have to sit out a certain time when you transfer? Uh, no, I actually played. My my eligibility was pretty good. No okay. sitting out. No, there's yeah. no way. I, I wouldn't yeah. sure how that works in high school sports if you have to sit out when you transfer from one school to another because of, you know, 
whatever well, uh, edge. Edge went pretty smooth. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. Um, you said now, and this is where we're, we're told some things that McDonald's are talking about. I, I want to go right to you and kind of clear some of that up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is us and you're talking. And again, anytime you feel like you know you're done talking, you can jet out of here, man. You know, you're free to go. Mm -hmm. right? We've kind of just you know we, the safety issues with us are over for right now. Mm -hmm. Um, but we would still like to get to the bottom, as I discussed before, as to why we were all called there to begin with. Talking to your uh, is it your manager that's in there. Mm -hmm. All right, she had mentioned that maybe uh, and, um, that you may be without a place to stay. Right. Do you, are you you told us that you're staying with your family though? I said I'm not meant to embarrass you, but are you do you live with your family? Or are you having some outs with the with the parents or? Yeah, I'm, I'm just yeah. Don't really have. I'm, I'm just financially down right now. So um, I'm going back to school to get my finances back, to get to, to, to regroup just some things that I didn't know about. And and like I said, everything seems to be coming full circle for me. Okay. And and I'm just, you know, going my separate way right now. From your, from your parents? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, point blank. I mean, we've all been there. You haven't fallen out with mom and dad right now? Mm-hmm. Is that, is that, I don't know what in your mouth. Yeah, right? yeah, not, I mean, not necessarily a, a falling out, just some um, difference of opinion. You're grown, opinion. right? Yeah. And I know what it's like because I was once there. A grown child in the parents' the house. House is not good. There you go. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Yeah. So it's just you know. And let me guess. I mean, this is a guess because you know maybe I could be off base, but they're ready for you to give up on the dream and get to work, or no? Are they behind your dream here, basketball. I don't know. I, I I don't know. That's not really any of my. Concern. That's not part of it. That's yeah. not an issue. Yeah. That's, oh, that's okay. You issue. just you just don't want to be living with mom and dad. Yeah, yeah. That's that's not really any any of my concern. Like if they want me to give up my dream or not. Is, I it, got, is it like house rules? I got keep pushing for me. Okay. Right. So you don't curfew impose that kind of thing. Oh, you don't no, want to no, be under no. those rules. Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's you. You're, you. It's not so much they don't want you there. Mm -hmm. Is you don't want to. You like you are. How old are you? Uh, I'll be 25 in, in you're, January. You're, you're a young man, right. and I don't want to have to be home by these time. I don't want to have to answer these questions because I'm 25. Mm -hmm. right, but I mean, I imagine they have their own set of rules because you're still their, their son. Right, right, right. Okay. All right. I mean, that is how, why you so to say you're without a place, it's by choice. You could go back there, but you have to live by their rules, and you're not, you know what, I'd rather be out on my own, and, right, right. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, have you been staying with anybody in between? I mean, is there a place yeah. that you can... Yeah, I mean, I, I have I have friends, but I'm going back to New York to, uh, like I said, continue to pursue my education, mm -hmm. which is... How which far is, along did you get? I graduated. Oh, you graduated? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, yeah. Uh -huh. so you graduated with a college degree. I did. In what? Uh, in sports management. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you going back to St. John's and to go back for... Uh, Further learning, or further, or are you going master's back to St. John's for just, just go back to the area because you like the area? Yeah, I'm going. I want to get my master's from St. John's. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah, I want to get my master's, and uh, that's what I want to do. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, all right. So, then yeah, I was completely off base. So you've completed school, and you're just going back, and you want to go back to the same school to finish your ma to get your master's. Right. right. Have you have you started yet with your master's? Or I that? haven't. I, I've started documentation. Everything seems to be going smoothly. Um, Professors have you know put all in and said that hey how we want to see you do it you okay know, we know you can so you're do confident it. you'll get accepted into the program or if you already been accept, accepted into a master's program that's correct you've yeah. already been accepted I'm confident I will oh, okay. okay yeah all right you like that area in New York then more yeah. than more than here is that you would you rather be up there starting your life or I mean it's just I've been there for so long mm -hmm. it's kind of my it's kind of my you know territory to say you're and comfortable. Comfortable. Okay. Yeah. Good. I mean, why, why not University of Florida or University of Tampa or USF? Why not local? Mm -hmm. I mean, do you have family up in New York? Uh, not in New York. I have family in New Jersey. In New Jersey. Okay, so not far. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So if you if you need some support group, you have a support group up there. It's not just you throwing caution to the wind and going up there on your own. I mean, which is you know bold anyway. But I mean, which is yeah. great. But I mean, yeah. you do have somebody up there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, mom and dad supporting your decision to go back. Yeah. Okay. Um, how old's your brother? Uh, he is twelve. Oh, okay. So he's just starting his basketball career. Yeah, going. yeah he's okay. just getting going. How is he? He's he's solid. Yeah, he's solid. You think he's gonna follow Big Brother's uh, footsteps? Or? We'll see. That's his decision. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, as far as capability, capability, capability. Yes, talent. We'll see. Okay. You know, everybody's different. 
but I see if he wants it, he can get it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, how long have you been back in Tampa since graduating? Has it been uh, just since, I know you started McDonald's when in September. Yeah, yeah. I've been back in Tampa. Like I said, like, I, I came and then I left, but yeah, I've been back since September. Okay. Oh, so just in September recently. Mm -hmm. Okay. How uh, you've been staying at your mom and dad's place? I saw. Is there any other place else? That you, do you have stuff belongs anywhere else, or is mom and dad where you uh, where you got everything? All your stuff's there. Pretty much. So okay. All right. Yeah. All right. And so they know you're trying to get back up to New York. Yeah. Okay. And you should something about calling your dad if need be to you know if you're going to go to the airport and. Yeah, I mean, he, yeah, I'll call him. Later. Okay. All right. Um, Let's. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about you know where we what brought us here today, mm -hmm. right? Like I said, I, there is a a lot of concern in general public for safety when it comes to firearms. Right. Any type of firearms introduced in the equation, regardless of what the equation is, especially a public place like a restaurant, it makes people very very nervous, right. and it, it elicits a huge response, obviously from law enforcement when you're dealing with the unknown involving the firearm. Mm -hmm. All right. So we got involved in this because of that. Mm -hmm. All right. What I what I would ultimately like to know is is that as far as you're concerned, is that firearm something that is that a legitimate purchase? Can oh. that come back to something no, somewhere no, no. else? Completely is that, legitimate. A pawn okay. shop, gun store? Oh no no. I, I go to I went to the gun store to, to purchase the the the, the gun. Okay. Legitimate. You you bought it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you have a concealed weapons permit? Uh, I don't. I don't. Okay. I don't. All right. Are you working toward it? Is yeah, yeah, your plans? Yeah, I I am. Mm -hmm. I know New York has different rules when it comes to firearms, regardless of all that. But I don't know. Did you plan on taking it with you? Uh, well, no, I, I didn't plan on taking it with me until I figured out, like you said, the laws and things like that. Okay. So, walk me through then, so I understand. Explain to me what happened. How how did it ended up in in, in McDonald's? Where it is now? What, what, well, what was the whole point like I said, I was going back to St. John's, mm -hmm. and I didn't want the firearm to be in my home with my little brother. Okay. Accidents happen. Okay. Sure. And I know he likes to, you know, just start searching for stuff. I can put it in a good place, but it's not good enough for him. He's older now. Mm -hmm. It's not like he's eight or seven anymore. Okay. Um, so I just had, I wanted to move it and I wanted to, you know, give it to someone to put it away. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and this someone was... Uh, she, she was... Uh, I forget that. Okay. No. Yeah, the woman at the McDonald's. She's a manager. Yeah, she is. She is Delanda. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh? Miss Walker. Miss okay. Walker. Uh, how long have you known her? Uh, I've known her uh, since September. Okay, so you didn't know her going in? No, no, no. But uh, she she seemed to be a, a, a very stand up lady. Okay. Um, um, and um, she got a good feel about her. Okay. So, so explain to me how it came to be that you. I mean, what what prompts you to decide to bring it to her? Well, like, well, she's for one, she's my supervisor. Okay. So, you know, the you know, since I've been there, she has instilled in me, you know, good, good and positive things. Okay. So, I, I just felt like, okay, she's a good person, she's a safe person, I can bring it to, and that's that's just how I came came about it. Do you keep it? At, do you have like a locker at McDonald's? Do you keep it in there normally, or do you kind of do you keep it uh, to and from no, your no, place no. in town? Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't even bring it. So where do you usually keep it? I usually keep it in my car. In, the in car? your car, yeah. Okay. So two, three moves away, you know, I, I've got the you know protocol and whatnot like that. So you're talking about to get to it in the car? Yeah, Explain yeah, to yeah. me how do you normally keep it locked up in your car? Just yeah, so just I, in the trunk. It. You just put it in the trunk. Yeah, I just okay. Keep it in the trunk. You keep it in a bag in a holster? Or how yeah, you I can just keep it in my bag. Excuse me one second. I'm sorry. I need to know this. Um, you good so anything else? It, it, just so you were aware, there is nothing that, so the, the old two-step, three-step thing is, I'm sure there are some states that still practice that. In the state of Florida, mm -hmm. as long if it's locked in the trunk uh -huh. and it's not in the passenger compartment with you, right, right. it's good. Okay. okay. It's there's, there's no issue with that. So in the state of Florida, it either has to be in a container with a lid, or which includes your center console, your... your uh, glove box mm -hmm. or snapped in a holster okay. so like a holster that has a snap that goes around it that's it okay, okay. loaded is good um, all that stuff is fine um, so 
what you're describing is perfectly legitimate as far as storage of the gun in your car. Right, right. There's nothing that says that you can't have a gun locked in your trunk right, right. whatsoever. I'm okay. Completely aware. So just just so you know, I mean, the, like I said, the old you know one step, two steps. Some people think you have to keep the ammo separate and all that stuff. It's not the case. Uh, container with a lid, mm -hmm. um, and that's the way the law reads. So as far as I know, that could be a Tupperware container, right? right? Mm -hmm. um, or snapped in a holster. Those oh. are your your two options. Okay. If and that's if the gun is. You know, in the passenger compartment with you, mm -hmm. if you got it locked in the trunk, it's you, you're solid. Okay, okay. so no concerns there. We're not we're not trying to, to trip you up or catch you in how you store your gun, mm -hmm. but I want to let you know that that's totally legitimate, totally above board. Yes. Okay. Hey, probably the door. It just it's getting a little warmer here. Okay. Yeah. I'll show you that. Yeah. Well, I, I'm sorry, I walked in like when I had to take that phone call, but um, it kept in the trunk and then. Yeah, we're just discussing the storage of the gun. Okay. Like I said, totally legitimate. Uh, okay. As long as it's locked up in the trunk, not in the passenger compartment with you, you're good. Okay. All right. Um, what you put it in a? What was it in today? It was in a. Uh, somebody said it was a salad bag. Did you put it in the salad bag? Yeah, I put it in a a brown bag, and yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Is that when you did you bring it in in the brown bag, and then when you got in the restaurant, put it in the salad bag? You already have a salad bag. You yeah. your salad bag from working in the salad car. Salad bag. Yeah. Which one? Is you have yeah, the salad bags already out there? Yeah, it was a salad bag. I put it in the brown bag first, and then I put it in another bag, and then I put it in the salad bag. Okay. okay. Which brings me to a bag. There's no one, Did you have another bag with you? Another bag with me? Like a backpack? Yeah, I did. What does that look like? Uh, it's a Nike bag. Okay, it's not a New York Yankees? No, no, no. Okay, okay there's... The manager was asking about a New York Yankees bag in her office. No one can account for it, so that doesn't belong to you. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Okay, all right. Uh, so you uh, you brought that into the. Uh, when did you bring that into her? Was that uh, in between the, the Am uh, Scott? And yeah, in between Am Scott, because um, um, I was supposed to. I went to Am Scott before I went to Am Scott. I brought it to her, and then I went to Am Scott and came back, and that's when everything happened. Okay. So the the reason why you brought it to her right then. Um, what, what was the reason that you, that you brought it at that point in time before you went to Amscot as opposed to after you got back? Is there is there any any reason behind that? No particular reason. Okay. What what was she supposed to do with it? Like, because she was unaware. Like she said, I, I don't know what. Right, right. Were you going to tell her what to do with it? Yeah, get rid of it. Yeah, or, yeah, or yeah. What? Uh, uh, initially, I just said I have something for you. I just mm -hmm. want you to put it away. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to M. Scott and do what I need to do. When I when I got back, then I was going to proceed to tell her the steps to take to what to do. Right. And what, what did you want to store it or to get rid of it? Yeah, I wanted to just to store it because okay. I mean I did purchase the gun with my hard working money. Right. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. how long did you purchase the gun? gun? No, I purchased. Uh, it's just. Uh, September. So shortly after you started working there or before yeah. you worked? Started? Shortly uh, after I started working there. Okay. Shortly after. Dude, where'd you buy it from? Maybe he already asked that. Where'd you get that? No, he, he had oh. not. Um, I bought He's it. He's a gun guy, so I, I, you know, I defer yeah. him. I, I, I bought it from the gun shop on gun. Uh, I'm sorry, not on gun, on Fletcher. Okay. Um, the big one? The big the, one. Uh, oh. Shoes Shoes World? Shoes World. World. Okay. okay. Uh, was it brand new or was it a used gun? It was a used gun. Okay. Is it? Do you know what generation it is? I don't generation know if you know. Three. Okay. Are you gun guy too? Uh, somewhat. You, I mean, have you yeah. shot? I mean, this isn't your first gun. Have you shot before? It is my first gun. It is. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. Have you shot other guns other people have had before? Uh, no. No, you just this is your your first ever. Mm -hmm. Have you put a lot of rounds through this one? Uh, no, not really. Uh, I, I mean, you know, he's he's like I said, he's a a pistol champ. Not I, you right. know, I can shoot well enough to to hold my own. But uh, where, where do you fall? Do you have any formal training anywhere? I mean, you, are you, you know, were you in the military? No. Okay. No, any no. formal law enforcement? I know you, it sounds like just college. Yeah, it's right. Uh -huh. Okay, but I mean, you have you put a bunch of rounds through that in practice since you've gotten it? No practice, just, just uh, you know, a couple of trips to the gun store, you know, and shoot. Wh which model is it? Because I haven't even seen it. It's, it's a 22, 23. It's a Glock 27. 27, so it's a little compact one? Compact. You like it? I mean, since you've been shooting, is it good? Yeah, it's 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 solid. It's, it fits my hand pretty good, and uh, yeah. Well, the Gen threes are good because they change the finish on them for the new ones. It's not the new ones are, in my opinion, not as good as the Gen threes. But the so, did you buy the ammo and everything at Shooter's World? I did. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. What kind of ammo did you get for it? Well, I got uh, my ammunition was. I'm not sure. Not sure. Uh, did you get rec- was it recommended by the guys there? It was. Okay. Uh-huh. Did Did you get like practice ammo, or no. did you get like self defense? Just self defense ammo. And did you shoot it with self defense ammo? Yeah, you did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's expensive stuff, man. Yeah. <laughs> They tell you not. To, they tell you. They, do they suggest to you that maybe you want to use practice ammo, or they just? They, they, well, they just, want to see how it runs, right? Yeah, they sure told, shoots it right. They just told me self defense ammo. Yeah, Plus, they sold it to you, right? Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. I'm sure. Yeah, that was an upsell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay, all right. Um, what did you give her some explanation as to why? What was in the bag? Did she have any idea what she was being handed? Not like I said. Initially, she wasn't. So it's not on her if she did. She did. Because clearly that's the issue. Is she, oh my God, what oh, did you just hand me? Oh. That's what prompted all of the response. And she said that she went to ask you and you were already at the door. So, right, right. Yeah. so at that point, there happened to be an officer that came to lunch at McDonald's and she's like, hey, uh, I need you to, to take care of this because she was worried. She was concerned. Okay. So that's that's how you ended up with the two of us mm-hmm. talking to you. Right, right, is, right. Just that the whole scenario. scenario struck her as odd. She was concerned because right. uh, she also said that maybe you were, uh, you know, having some difficulty. And probably the, the parents thing, as I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Um, and thought maybe one of your you recently have a death in the family. A death in the family. Did you have a death in the family recently? No. Okay, so maybe that was maybe you know who knows what kind of talk was there. But yeah. everybody's talking, putting these together. Like, man, why would he have a gun? And you know, it's not his. You know, and he seems a little distraught. Mm-hmm. Um, I think concern maybe for your well being ultimately, and mm-hmm. then. What did he just hand me? Why didn't he tell me? Right, right, right. You know, now, if you had said, "Hey, I'm about to get on the plane, and I got a 12 year old brother," that makes perfect sense, right? right? right. And maybe she wouldn't have freaked out. It, but, yeah. I got a gun in the car. I don't. I can't take it to the airport. Would you mind holding on to it for me? And then she could just make the decision. At that point, it probably would have been like, uh, "No, I don't feel comfortable with that." Okay, well, yeah, or yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, no problem. And, and, <clears throat> and that's why I didn't want to tell her right. initially. Until I got back. You're afraid she'd be nervous? Exactly. Which, okay. you know, I, I didn't want her to freak out or anything like that. Did you ask her not to look in the bag? Yeah, uh, I just, yeah, I did. I just said, you don't even have to look at it. And then, like she said, before she can ask me, I was probably, I was probably out the door. Okay. Was there anything else in the bag or just the gun? Just the, uh, yeah, it, just the gun. Inside the other bag. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was it loaded? Was it loaded? It was loaded. Okay, okay. I was saying, is it... You know, I, I just can't imagine that you tell her not to look into it. That she, what is she going to do? She, she, she's exactly. curious to what things exactly. are giving me. It wasn't right. human nature anything like that. Yeah. Just, it was loaded. Yeah. Just five bullets. No, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. But it, it, it obviously, it caused a lot of men nervous. I know it did. Other yeah. than the range, have you or anyone else that you know have fired that gun anywhere? No. Okay. And the reason I ask this is because we'd like to, anytime we come across a firearm, we'd like to make sure it wasn't previously used in any kind of wrongdoing. All right. So, with that being said, do we have your consent to fire that gun, to test fire it, in order to make sure it wasn't traced back to something that was inappropriate? Yes. Is that okay if we do that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For that, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a form here. I'm gonna try to find a form because um, but as far as you know, you purchased it legally from the store. Mm-hmm. Out of the store, it hasn't been out of your control. No, no, no. Okay. So no chance some buddy of yours went and, hey, I'm borrow it to go shoot, came back with it hours later and said, hey, and then, you know, went up and stuck up a liquor store or something like that. No, no, no. Okay. No. All right. You can, you can attest. I can attest. I, you've been in control of that gun. Yeah. As safely as you can make it mm-hmm. with your familiarity with all that. Yeah. Okay. So, right, so what I'd like to do, and it's, once again, may we test fire that gun to ensure that it hasn't been fired anywhere else? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let me, uh, we got a multi purpose form here, so I'm trying to find something that applies in this particular case. I've got to imagine that's going to be the closest this is, thing. Yeah, right? it's the closest one. Yep. So, yeah, come here. Are you good? You want something to eat or something? Are you, are you good for now? Or chit chat? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, it says consent to search warrant, waiver of search warrant. There is no real consent that we have that uh, applies to test firing a gun. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, most of the time we recover it in any kind of criminal matter, and, we, and it's therefore open for us to test fire. In this particular case, we expect this to be cleared up. You can go on your way anytime you'd like, and we'll be able to return this gun to you, and because it's your gun, you yeah. bought it. Like you said, we hard earned money. Mm-hmm. Last thing we want to do is keep a gun from you, um, but at the same time, we want to make sure that when you walk away, you know that hey, 
that gun's cool, right? It's, it's safe. No, it, you know, it's not going to be. You also bought it right used, right? Right. Make sure. Yeah, that that's what I'm saying. Thing. Yeah, right. So that God tell God you knows who you right before, before you. you, and we keep that stuff in a database. Mm-hmm. So then you can comfortably know that. All right, not only did I buy it legally, but then it's been traced by the cops, and there's no wrongdoing attached to this gun. So I can go forward and be comfortable that as long as I keep this out of the wrong hands, and as long as I do all the right stuff with it, that that gun's good. Okay. So I'm going to check this block, and I'm going to alter it just to the language. I'm going to do that in front of you. But it says it's a consent to search warrant. What is consent to? I'm going to blind do that right there, and just write in this line. Test fire a firearm. Okay. In this particular case, help me out there, gun guys. It's a Glock. Twenty-seven. 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 Now we don't know the serial number on it. I'm sure, you know, unless you know it, unless you're that guy. No. I'd be impressed by that. It's located at right now. Right now, where, where was the last time? Well, you handed it to uh, Miss Walker, right? Do you know what she did with it? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I hope she still has it. Where? You no, know, no, she definitely still has it. But you know, where was it that uh, you handed it over to her? Was well, it out in the floor or in the lobby? No, or was no, it? I, w- I definitely wouldn't do that. Um, just kept it professional. We went to the back. I told her I just needed you to hold on something until I got back, okay. and I, I, I handed it to her. The bag? Office. Yeah. Okay. And we said handed it, it was in the bag? Mm-hmm. Okay. What with that office? Is that a manager's office? Is that like an employee break room? What is that back there? Uh, that is a manager's office in the bag. Does, does, do employees have access to that office? Yeah, or is that specifically for the, it's, it's kind of for anybody to go and get yeah. off the floor when they're having a break or something. Right, right, right. Okay. It's not locked up. It's not a secure... No, 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 no. Okay. Uh-huh. So we'll always go to the manager's office. Mm-hmm. Do you know the address, sir? Yeah. Do you know it? I wrote it down. Oh, yeah. Twenty one oh one East thirteenth. Bear with me on this. We'll walk through this together. Okay. This is it's consent to right here, test fire firearm. Your Glock 27. Okay. Right now it's located at the manager's office in McDonald's at 2101 East 13th Avenue. Mm-hmm. Says, and right on. Yeah, I'm crossing the end here. All right. I give consent to freely and voluntary without compulsion, threat, or promise of any kind. I understand. Right. I understand my constitutional right to refuse. And this is all, this applies simply to a search warrant, but I scratched through all that stuff, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, and when you initially, I want you to acknowledge that that's in fact what we've done here. And what this is, is essentially on the record, on the tape, is I just want your permission to test fire this gun in order to further compare it to any other potential wrongdoing in the past before it may have come in your hands, uh, or the gun shop's hands even. Um, to eliminate any possibility there's any wrongdoing tied to that gun. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay, do you freely give consent for us to do that? I do. Okay. If that's the case, just initial here, and then print and sign your name there, please. Just write that. Just you read through it, make sure I cross through with everything that applies. I don't want, uh, you know, I think we're pulling a fast one on you or something. Yeah. Print, name. print name and then, yeah, sign next to it. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to fill in the uh, particular 28th day of November. This is the 28th, right? Yep. 27th on there? Okay. 
2017. And my name is going here. And my partner Austin's name is going here. What's your badge number, Austin? 465. What I'm going to ask here is the same thing, if you don't mind, because mm -hmm. we kind of freelance this. Uh, if you do give us consent, can you write something to the effect that I give Tampa Police consent to test fire my glass? Something to that effect. In your own words, yep. it doesn't have to be long winded yourself, to, so we're all on the same page and there's no misunderstanding. Right. I appreciate it, man. Thank you very much for taking the time to meet with us and clear this up, because I think yep. we're all going to feel a little better about the circumstances right. after this is all squared away. You uh, just add Glock 27 so mm -hmm. we know that All we're right. talking about the right gun, the same right. gun. Yeah, just signing. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll line through this and I'll both initial the rest. So I don't know about adding uh, any of the bottom of that. I also freely give consent for half my paycheck from my future basketball earnings to go to Detective Night Later. All right. All right. So when you bought the gun, did they sell you one box of ammo? Uh, they did. Just one? Just one. Just okay. initial next to me there. Did you take it to their range to test fire? Thanks. Did you test fire to their range? Uh, Is no. there a range there? No, no, no. no? I didn't, no. Where'd you go to shoot it? I just shot it outside. Okay. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know what that's. Shot it outside? Yeah. At the range? No, no, not at the range. Oh, where did you fire at? Uh, up the street somewhere. It, was, it wasn't much. Just just, uh, just one shot. One shot like yeah, you hit the yeah. ground or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said there were five bullets in it? Okay. Uh, right now there is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that in the magazine, like four in the magazine, one in the chamber, or are they all in the magazine? No, they're all in the magazine. Nothing in the chamber? Nothing in the chamber. Okay. Is the rest of the ammunition in the box still? Uh, No ammunition in the box. Okay. Uh -huh. do, you, do you have the ammo box, like in, in the car? Did no, you keep no. it? No. Got rid of it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So the, you know, as far as I, all the ammunition you have to that gun, is just the five that are still intended? Excuse me? The five that are in it right now, that's all you have left of all the ammo you purchased with that gun? That's correct. Okay. And you test fired all the rest of it? Or test fired, I mean, you, you practice with all the rest of it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I haven't purchased any more. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Was it one box? One box. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Did you give a driver's license? Did, did somebody get that from you? Or? Yeah, I don't have anything on me that I have. Is it still in your car? Or did somebody take it? Did an officer take it from you? Yeah, officer had it. Did you have a wallet or something on you? Yeah, I had, I had the wallet. It's I had standard and we'll... Okay, but I want to make sure that you have that because if you do decide, if, if you, anytime you want to get up and out of here, I'm sure you would like to have your blinds with it as well. Where do you, uh, did the officer come up with it, do you know, or did they? I'm not sure. I'm let not me, sure who Let me find you. out from you, man. Hey, yeah. You don't mind. No, no, I don't. No, no. Um, yeah, just talking about that before, mm -hmm. they will sell you the most expensive box of ammunition to go to the range, you know, when you can buy cheap stuff at Walmart and shoot sure, all right. Yeah. So so so, like he said, it's an upsell. You know, it's an upsell. Exactly. It's just so they get there. Right. Yeah, the the hollow point self defense ammunition is a lot more expensive than getting practice ammo at Walmart. Right, right. right. So they will the, at the gun shops. You, I mean, you got to know a little bit about it. Or you you know you run the risk now buying a, a used Glock is a really good choice because mm -hmm. they hold their value. Right, right. So whatever you paid for it, as long as you don't scratch it up and slide it across the ground and everything else, you'll get out of it. Right. If you ever needed to sell it, if you needed to, you know, like you said, get out of town, 
you know, um, get a plane ticket or whatever, it's uh, it's kind of currency. It's kind of like having a Rolex, right, you right, know. Right, right. You can always sell a Rolex, no right, problem. Right. Any, any pawn shop in the world. That's correct. Okay. So, same yeah. thing with a Glock. You same. go buy a high point, and you might get a third of what you paid for it when oh. you get, when you try to sell it. Okay. But uh, Glock will always sell. Okay. What? what, what? Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so what do you guys care? We carry six. So six, yeah, I, I saw that six, six. hours. Yeah, uh, we, uh, those the best. I they're not my favorite. Mm-hmm. I'll be honest with you. I think for a police officer, I don't think you can do better than a Glock. Right. You can spend more money if you want, right. but I don't think you can do better. Yeah. Uh-huh. So that's kind of the way I look at it. Mm-hmm. Um, now I carry what they gave me. Mm-hmm. Um, I can go buy a Glock. That's one of the approved guns. Mm-hmm. I haven't done it because I haven't had any problems with this one. Mm-hmm. But I'm not, you know, right. it's all right. Um, but uh, I don't think it's worth the extra money you spend on it. Okay. Um, Glocks are very simple guns, so they they always function. Basic. And, yep. It, what thirty four parts I think right, is right, in right. a Glock. Mm-hmm. Um, the Sig that we carry is like fifty something. You know. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's like fifty percent more parts. Mm-hmm. That's that many more things go wrong. Okay. Right. So now I. I like them, um, but you know we don't carry them anymore. Mm-hmm. We used to. We had Glocks, and then we got Smith and Wesson MPs, and then we got the Six. Okay. So uh, in changing calibers from nine millimeter to forty, and then back to nine. Okay. So. And, 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 and I mean, just for future future reference, what I mean as far as self defense, what, mm-hmm. what's what's more, um, what 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 do you know, regular people use for well, self-defense. The FBI came out with a study that said that 9 millimeter was actually the most effective, and it was for a lot of different reasons. Mm-hmm. The Ballistically, it's it's almost as good as 40 or 45, but you can control a 9 millimeter a lot better. Right. The recoil is, is not nearly as it's much. Light. 40 is a snappy, it's it's a high-pressure round, mm-hmm. right? So it's it's a significant amount of recoil, especially in a compact gun. Okay. Uh, in a full size gun, you can control a little better. But I'll be honest with you, I've owned pretty much all of them, mm-hmm. um, and I would rather shoot a forty five than a forty as far as recoil. Uh, I don't think it's a snappy. It, you know? As snappy as the forty, because right. it's not a high pressure round. A forty five is a big round, but it's slow moving. Forty fast moving round that's still pretty heavy. Uh-huh. You're gonna need a lot of recoil because it's all physics, right? Right, right? Heavy round coming out on this end is gonna give you that much recoil on the back end. Uh-huh. So what they what they figured out studying law enforcement is that for us nine millimeter was the way to go because the control and the follow up shots, right? So forty is a little bit better ballistically. Forty five is a little bit better than that ballistically, but the nine millimeter you've got capacity and you've got Recoil management, mm-hmm. right? Follow up shots. Mm-hmm. You don't have it jumping around all over the place. Mm-hmm. So that's what ultimately led our department to go back to nine. You okay. know, they went to forty because there were some concerns over effectiveness of nine millimeter. Mm-hmm. I don't think they were ever really valid. But now that nine millimeter ammo is, you know, it's it's all technology based too. Mm-hmm. All these ammunitions have changed over the years and evolved. And nine millimeter is right there. Okay. I mean, it is almost as good as the others, and you can typically carry a couple more rounds. Mm-hmm. You can fit more in the magazine, right. and like I said, recoil. It's, a, it's just a different different level. I don't, have you ever shot a nine millimeter? Uh, no. So if you ever, if you have an opportunity to shoot your forty caliber Glock mm-hmm. side by side with a nine millimeter, uh-huh. you'll probably want to switch. Really? It's that it's that different. Wow. Yep. Forty wow. is is real snappy, and with a nine, you can stay almost. I mean, you just. Yeah, if you're using Easy. your using using your control and your muscles, you can stay almost level on target with with very little muzzle flip. flip. Right. But the forty, it's a lot harder. What about range? Uh, I don't think there's a significant difference in handgun ammo. Mm-hmm. You know, um, right. the nine is a real nice flat shooting round. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as range, yeah, handgun handgun ammo we shoot on the pistol team, we shoot out to fifty yards with the handgun. And you know it's still lethal and effective. Any further than that, your sights aren't good enough. Right. You know you can't shoot an accurate. I mean it's hard to shoot at 50 yards. It took me several years right, right. to get proficient even at that. Right, right. Um, but beyond that, your sights aren't effective. Mm-hmm. So forget about the ammo being effective. Your sight, you can't shoot what you're you can't hitting at. Right. You can't hit what you're shooting at. So right. you got to go to a rifle at that point mm-hmm. where you have a long sight radius. Mm-hmm. Where you can those little see. those little adjustments where you're not quite perfect on a on a pistol. Where your sight radius is this long, that's going to throw the bullet inches way off. Mm-hmm. On a rifle, it might be millimeters, mm-hmm. you know, because the sight radius is so long. So that's 
I, I wouldn't have any concerns about range whatsoever. Yeah. You know, and typically most handgun battles, gunfights, are within like three yards. Uh, you know, right. they're, they're not happening at a significant dif- distance. Right. It's somebody physical altercation or it's usually really close. Right. It's possible you might have to one day take one long range shot, but it's not likely. Okay. You know, most cops even. I think it's three to seven yards is is the distance for most gunfights. Okay. So yeah, it's not not really a in in the real world not a big concern. I mean, it's more of an academic thing. People think of well, what could go wrong if I've got this type of gun or this type of ammo? But mm-hmm. more importantly, what really happens in the real world? In right. the real world, gunfights are close distance. Close distance. Yeah, right, right, they're right. not happening from far away. Right, right, right. So okay. yeah, well, you know your stuff. No, I've I've been shooting and and collecting and competing for a long time, and right. uh, it's just it's something I enjoy. Yeah, and I think if you're you know proficient at it, um, it it's even more fun. It's like being a basketball player. Right. You know, right. If you're not a good player, it's not a lot of fun to play basketball. Not a lot of fun for me to play basketball, right? right? But it's fun for me to go shoot because I can do it well. Exactly. So. Mm-hmm. But no, Glock is a good choice. You yeah. know, a lot of people cheap out on their first gun, mm-hmm. especially they'll buy a. Or they'll buy a high point or they'll buy a Jennings or something because, oh, it's only 150 bucks to 250 bucks. Mm-hmm. So it's a little bit harder to swallow that, you know, $400 or $500 for, you know, for a Glock. Right. But it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah, I'd spent uh, close to $400. Uh, and that was just on the gun? Just on the gun. Right. Yeah. But like I said, you could turn around and sell it for exactly what you paid for it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so if you if you bought it new, you would take a hit on it. But since you bought it used, it's already a used gun. You're getting a used price. Uh-huh. And you, if you're not, yeah. like I said, dinging it up, scratching it up, and uh-huh. everything else, and it looks just like it did when you bought it, it's right. going to be worth the same amount. So nobody's going to know how many rounds you fired through it. Right, right, you know, right, nobody's right. going to know if it was 50, fifteen 60. or five thousand. You know, and maybe some parts are starting to get worn out. Mm-hmm. Nobody's going to know. Mm-hmm. But even five thousand is not a lot for a block. They got Glocks out there shooting hundred thousand rounds, yeah, which is big money. Well, that's the thing. Ammo gets expensive when you shoot. Yeah, it's one of the reasons I'm on the pistol team because mm-hmm. the department provides the ammo for, right, right. for the pistol team, so I get to shoot and practice for free. See, so that part. So I have to buy the guns, most of them. You know, I have to buy the guns. They they issue me this one to carry on duty, but this isn't a good competition gun. Right, right. So. And good guns are, you know, competition guns are real expensive. Not fair. But other than that, the yeah. Glock is... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, for, for a gun that you're going to carry uh, for self-defense or for a cop on duty, like I said, I just don't think you can do any better. Mm-hmm. Spend more money if you want to, right. but I don't think you're going to get a better gun. Right. You might get incremental differences. Trigger might be a little bit better uh-huh. on this brand. Um, but you can't beat the finish on a Glock. Like I said, the Generation 3, mm-hmm. um, we had those at my old agency, and in and out of holsters and everything else, mm-hmm. they still look new. Right, right, you know, right. Whereas the guns that we got here, even within a short period of time, you can you can see the wear on them because mm-hmm. the finish isn't as good. Right. But, um, and they, they just work. Oh, you know? yeah. So that was a good choice. Right, okay. A good choice. Well, initially I wanted a 30S. Mm-hmm. That's what I wanted initially, but they didn't have it. I think they only they said that they only sell it to you have to be military mm-hmm. or um, something along those lines because the 30s was a little bit more compact. Mm-hmm. The 30s had the the uh, lighter slide and um, it was um, and it was still 45 caliber. And that's a single stack. It was yeah. a single four, uh-huh. single stack 45. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just bought a single stack nine millimeter, a little same same reason, you know, a little bit slimmer, easier to you know carry, easier to conceal, right, right, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So, but again, in New York, you a whole different ball game, right, right. Because I can tell you, in Florida, like I said, if you have a Tupperware container you with a lid on it, that gun per statute container with a lid, right. that's all it says, right, right, you know, right, right. so that's that's all you need. But in New York, it's totally different story, totally different story. You'll be worried about your ammunition. Because there's some places, uh, I know uh, Virginia is one of them, where you can't have hollow point ammunition whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So even if you're a police officer and you're driving through Virginia, um, 
I think maybe for your duty gun, if you're carrying that, you uh-huh. might be all right. But if you're carrying an off-duty gun, if you're carrying a personally owned gun, and right. you've got hollow points in it, they will charge you. You can't have hollow points, period, in that state. Wow. So um, I don't know what it is for New York for, for ammunition, Yeah. but even that stuff gets regulated. Wow. Florida, we joke that it's the gunshine state. It really, I mean, it literally is. It's wide open. Gee. You know, you can buy pretty much whatever you want as long as you're not a convicted felon. You're over 21. Fair game. You know, you wait your three days and, you know. Mm-hmm. Sure, you dealt with a three-day waiting period. Yeah, right? yeah, I did. Uh-huh. And even we have to if we if if a cop doesn't have a concealed weapons permit, we have to wait three days, which okay. is absurd, right? Because they give us a gun. We clearly are carrying a gun, but we still got to wait the three-day waiting period when we buy a new one, unless you have a concealed weapons permit. Okay. If you get your permit, then there's no waiting period. Just okay. go in and buy it. Right. So. Okay. That makes me feel better. What's that? Just the, the, the all your knowledge, your information. It's I, I think that it's important because there's a lot of there's a lot of rumor that gets out there, mm-hmm. you know, like the two steps, three steps away from it and that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. And then you're trying to interpret what that means. Mm-hmm. Best thing to do, all of the Florida statutes are online. You okay. can go right on there and search for firearm stuff. It's all combined into one one chapter. Right. And you can look <laughs> line by line. What, you know, how can I transport this thing? Mm-hmm. Um, what is it? How, how is it considered to be a concealed weapon? And if it's in a car, what do I need to do? And it, word for word, container with a lid or snapped in a holster. Okay. Those are your options. And then once it's in that form, it, is. Okay. it can be, it can right be under your seat. It can be tucked in the map pocket behind your, you know, behind the seat next to you. It can be wherever, as long as it's either in a container with a lid sure or right snapped in a holster. It is. Uh, yeah, I can I see it, please? You don't have to pull it out of this way. Oh, well. Okay. There you go. All right. Uh, I just want to fill this form out here. Is that the driver's license? You do. Okay. All right. I'm trying to get another one. Okay. So I, I, got, I got ahead of myself on this one. Um, the consent thing is, and maybe I, I assumed it was understood, but let me explain to you. Okay. The gun, we obviously, uh, we don't shoot it in the McDonald's bathroom. No. Okay. okay. We have to actually take it. And take it to a safe place, a, a lab, fire it to do that. Mm-hmm. Do we still have your consent to actually take the gun into our possession? I can't promise you it's going to be back in your hands tonight, but if you plan on leaving anyway, I mean, you know, I, but ultimately you will be right. allowed to get it back. Uh-huh. But for the time being, we need to take it to a lab, test fire it when that lab is available to us to fire. Is it okay if we seize that gun in order to take it, in order to fire it and test fire? Absolutely. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. I, I obviously crossed through this, but I'm just. Uh, you know what? You know where, where would I? Where would I? So here, what, what happens? Get it back. It, mm-hmm. yeah. it comes into our our property. So once they take it in, they they fill out a form that says we're taking this gun um, to you know this lab. And once it's done, they package it up in a box, goes to our property room, and that is associated with you and your name. They will then. Uh, I mean, we there's, will probably call you. Yeah. There's also right. we have a separate unit that what does is return it back to the right. person. We have reason to separate unit because what that person does is make sure between the time that you uh, give it up to us and the time we return it to you that you haven't since uh, been convicted of a felony. Mm-hmm. You haven't since been uh, admitted for any mental evaluation to make sure the gun is still safe to give it back to its rightful okay. owner, which would be you in this okay. case. But they would it back out to you. I, I wasn't clear about that, but it might be a couple of days. It may not be, uh, like I said, if they're not firing into the ground right now, yeah. so here you go. My, my, yeah, the only question is, you know, where once once the whole deal is over, mm-hmm. you guys have it back in your possession after it's tested? Yes. What, where do, do you mail it? Do you send it? We can we work that out with you. Okay. We'll contact you. Our, it, us, we'll reach out to you and say, hey, we're done with it. Thanks, man. Where are you? Are you in New York now? We'll send it back to you. Are you still in town? I'll drive it over to okay, you. So or if you're at McDonald's, I'll bring it over to you there. And possibly buy. through email. You mean the communication? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But speaking Absolutely. of which, what is the best way to uh, to reach out to you? Do you have a phone number? Uh, phone's off. Like I said, I, I've been just working. Just to How long has it been off? Been a while? Uh, it's, it's, it's been too long, you know, but I, I'm going to get it off. Do you have that phone with you now? When you're 24. And I don't have it. Did, did, you, did you have it? I so it's probably, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's probably with yeah. the rest. I just pulled your wallet to bring it to you. Okay. Uh, what, what, is, what was the phone number? What is the phone number that was associated with it? 813 uh-huh. 504 Triple zero seven, and you you plan on keeping that number to reach out to you? Uh, so we can reach out to you again. The, the best uh, form of contact would be email howdonaldson at gmail dot com. Your name Donaldson, mm-hmm. all all together. Yes. Okay. 
at gmail dot com. Eight one three five zero four zero 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 seven was the number, but you don't plan on keeping that number. It may not be it in service. Be and who's that provider with? Uh, that provider is AT and T. AT and T. Okay. How long? And you said how long has the service been off? It's been off for I mean since September or yeah. A month. Right? It's been off a month. It's been a month. So mm -hmm. all of November. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. uh, I'll make a little note. Service is off, so I don't call it one. Why not available? All right. With the uh, with the gun, obviously, um, you said the ammunition. There's no more ammunition. Okay, your car is at the McDonald's right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we would like your permission again, with your permission, to search that vehicle for any remnants of any other firearm uh, or bullets. Okay. Okay. But again, uh, may we have your consent to search your car? Is there anything in there that's going to get you in trouble? It's going to be. I mean, volunteer that now because we're only looking for specific things. Nothing. Okay. Can we can we have your consent to search your car for? Firearm evidence or any other inappropriate evidence that we might come across uh, linking you to any crime. There's not any of that in there, is there? No. Okay. Uh, with that being said, may we have consent to search your car? Yes. Okay. Now, this form is specifically for that, so I don't have to cross through anything. All right? It's the same thing. I'm just not going to be, you know, lining through all this stuff. All right. What kind of car do you have? Uh, it's a Ford uh, Mustang GT 95. 1995? Mm-hmm. Ford. You don't happen to have the tag number, do you? No, I don't. Okay. And that's located at the McDonald's? Yeah. La and maybe be specific, where did, you, where did you sleep last night? Uh, last night? Uh, I s where did I sleep? I did you sleep, sleep at home or no? No. Okay. No. Where did you sleep? I slept at La Quinta. Okay, was that a room that you got by yourself, or did you have someone that was stick at the room that yeah, you were staying with? So. Okay. Where was that LaQuinta at? Uh, located not too far from the airport. Okay. Because mm -hmm. right. I'm, I still not. Let me finish up this, so I'm not distracting, distracting you. Again, this is saying that we hereby voluntary full consent uh, to search your 1995 Ford Mustang GT, which is located currently at the McDonald's. Um, and you can read through that, all of that, but all this applies to what I'm asking you now. If you agree to all of that and give us consent to search card, just initial there, print, sign again, please. But, but you know, if, you, if you'd like to read through it, read through it. Nothing in that call we need to be concerned about as far as safety, right? There's no, you don't have anything rigged in there to, uh, you know, some crazy uh, anti-theft device that we need to be aware of. So when the officer puts his hand down, it's like a mousetrap, snaps his fingers in there. No, Not at all. Okay. <laughs> all right. The, the 95 or 2005? Uh, 95. It's still 5.0 back it, then? It is. Mm -hmm. Just so you know, I'm doing exactly what you're doing. The other one just fell at the bottom of this. All right. Um, three is. The manager also mentioned that, you, or I think it was the manager, asked if you, if did, uh, did you would ask her to sleep in the McDonald's. Is that accurate or no? She misunderstood. Did you ask to stay in the McDonald's lobby overnight at some point? I do. Okay. Is that because it, are you, do you not want to go home for some reason? No, I mean, it's just, I, I just, it's just time for me to get my own place and, and do my own thing. Okay. Um, it's, it's nothing. How long have you been? away from home where you haven't gone back? How long has it been? A day? Two days? A week? Yeah, just a little, a day since I... So the La Quinta, and then the night before that you were at home? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, La Quinta gets expensive, so... Right. Right. Okay. All right, so you haven't, been, you haven't been out on your own or homeless, so to speak, for too long. It's only been about a night? Yeah. Okay, before that, every night you'd come home back and forth when you're Ford Mustang to your town and country home. Where your folks folks are. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any family or friends up around Hillsboro Avenue, Nebraska area? Fifteenth, Nebraska. Are you familiar with that area? Um, uh, fifteenth in Nebraska. Or fifteenth in Hillsboro, Hillsboro, Nebraska. Uh, no family up there at all. No girlfriends. Nobody that. Uh, uh, there's McDonald's up there. You haven't been back and forth to any McDonald's up there, have you? No. For any reason. No. Okay. I mean, from what I've plant. Tampa Catholic, town and country, Alonzo. Uh, did you grow up in Tampa? You did, right? Did. You grew up in Tampa. Did you at one point have friends or anybody over there in that area that would 
lead you to, to hang out or visit anybody over in that area? Not at all. Okay. All right. Um, your mom and dad, uh, who would you, if when we reach out to anybody to come get a car if we need to do it, I don't think that's going to be an issue. Like mm -hmm. I said, I, I, I take you at your word. I assume there's nothing there. At the end of all this, and mm -hmm. any time, like I said, you're, you're free to go. You can get up and leave and, and end all this um, conversation. Um, I think we're getting to the crux of the issue. I think we're going to make sure everybody feels good about what's happening. Because I don't know if you know, there's a lot of people gathered around out there trying to you know, be a busybody. And in the end, um, we want to make sure that we come back and say, like, Hal Donaldson is good, guys. Don't worry about it. There's a lot about nothing. Uh, so far, I think you've gone a long way to helping us out with that. Um, I think the, the biggest hurdle is now make sure there's nothing that we need to concern about in your car, make sure nothing we can concern about with that gun. Mm -hmm. Uh, you've assured me there's not that mm -hmm. gun. You fired it once outside after you bought it, right? Yeah. And that was you. No chance that you hit anything. Not at all. Okay. No. All right. I mean, it didn't ricochet and put a car window out where somebody's going to be. There's a report somewhere up there saying somebody shot. Do you remember where window. you were at when you just fired it? Uh, probably not too far from the gun store. I'm not sure. Okay. I just, yeah. I don't remember. But okay. then you, the rest of the shots you took were inside the range. Okay, and the rest of that box minus the five that you still have left in it. Well, okay, all right. What, what range did you get to? Uh, it's, it, it's at the gun store. Which one? Um, uh, Shooter's World. Same one? Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, same place you bought the gun from? Yeah. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Question where I was on. I lost my train of thought. Um, did you, are you holding another job anywhere besides McDonald's? Uh, here in Tampa, Florida? Yes. Uh, since I've been here, no. Yes. Okay. Did you have one up in New York? I did. Do it, McDonald's? Are you kind of transferring down, or no, not McDonald's. Um, it was uh, a marketing company. Okay. Yeah. Are you are you associated with uh, who's your coach at Tampa Catholic? Don Dezago. Okay. Who's J C? J C Prado. J.C. Prado, he was uh, my assistant coach from Tampa County. Is he the owner of that McDonald's? He is. Okay, did he, did he help you at all get the job? Or just happened to be coincidental that you end up working there and he's the owner of the McDonald's? Did you got to go through him at all to get the job there? I did. He's a, he's, he's a good guy. Okay, all right. So he's got to help you out with that. Mm -hmm. Are you still keeping contact with him? Uh, I do. All right. Does yeah. he know about what's going on with your... He does not. Not, not tonight, I mean, you know, with your efforts to go back to St. John's and all that stuff. Uh, No. Okay, he's not aware of what your plans are? Mm -hmm. All right. Cause, I mean, yeah, it sounds like you plan on quitting McDonald's and going back up, right? Well, not completely quitting. I just, I, I really don't know. I'm just, I, as far as, I don't want to completely quit because if I if I don't get accepted, I need to come back here. I still okay. need to have a job. Do they know you're planning on going for, and leaving mm -hmm. for an extended period of time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knows that? Your manager or, yeah, or JC? Delonda knows. Delonda knows that you're going, and they're going to hold your position. Your position available to you if you come back. Is there a certain amount of time they've given you? Uh, not 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 anything concrete. Okay. I think they give you two to three weeks. Okay, so, all right. So you got two to three weeks to, and you think within that time you're going to find out whether exactly. Okay. Did, did the the whole situation at home kind of prompt you to make that decision? I'm just going back, going back to school. Well, was that, was that well, kind of what it was? Well, not it, not really. It's just. Because initially I wanted to go back to school right. and, and get my education. Because that's first, first and foremost, and, and I, that's what I understand. Mm -hmm. But um, I, that initially I wanted to go and to do that. So I, I, I feel like um, I think that's the best opportunity right now. The staff, the faculty at St. John's, they're familiar with me, and they're pushing me to say they they've seen me grow. They've seen me. You know, start out as a freshman, mm -hmm. and they 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 still like me. So they're saying, "How you need to just go ahead and do that." So they're like you, family, excuse me. They're like family to you. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of trust in them, and they see a lot of potential in you. Absolutely. So there's a good relationship there. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes sense. I mean, I can understand why you want to stay. I mean, right. Why try it somewhere else? Because you don't know if you're gonna get that same exactly anywhere else. Did you play ball anywhere else? Did you go to any of the junior colleges or anything? Or did you no, go right no. to St. John's? Yep, straight to St. John's. Good for you. Yeah. Um, anytime I have a question.
much more of uh, a train of my train of thought. Um, oh, uh, oh, first of all, one of our guys bought pizza. Are you pizza? You want pizza? Yeah, I'll take some pizza. You know, pepperoni or cheese? Pepperoni. I mean, cause I, I don't want to encourage you to stay any longer than you want to, but I mean, if you want to stay long enough for a piece of pizza, you want a piece of pizza? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, um, the other thing was, is, uh, oh, do you have any illnesses at all? No. You know what I mean? God forbid I give you a slice of pizza and you guys are going to lactose intolerance. No, 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 no. Diabetes, nothing like that? Nothing like that. Okay, you're, you're, you've got a clean bill of health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, no injuries, no old injuries or something that's going to act up from no, pepperoni? No, no, no. All no. right. Well, you got a pepperoni or cheese or one of each? Or? Uh, I'll take two pepperonis. Two pepperonis, you got it. Thanks awesome. So I'm sorry about that. I'm good, man. You sure? All right. I'm good. Uh, so when you play ball up there, you said you walked on. So did they take care of your school? I mean, or uh, did you have to take out student loans and stuff? Well, yeah, I still uh, took, I took out some student loans mm -hmm. not many my, my parents did they they assisted me with that okay so they, they they've been good with that's that good. they put me through school pretty much oh that's good and so um, out of state too so I imagine that was a pretty penny yeah yeah exactly so exactly so I, I can tell you that you know I I was also very fortunate didn't have to take out very many student loans and not being saddled with that debt when you get done mm -hmm. is huge Huge. Right, right, Some right. people come out of school. I mean, these days it's common to come out of school fifty grand in debt. Uh -huh. You know, if not a hundred and fifty grand in debt, right, right. because you're paying for school and you're taking out loans for apartments and food and everything else. Uh -huh. So now that's a that's a big deal. I was kind of wondering because I mean, I, I went in state and it was you know still wasn't cheap, but I know it was you know a lot cheaper than going out of state to a private school, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, private Catholic at that. Wow. So. Yeah, so what, like thirty grand a year <coughs> tuition? Uh, close to it. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, that's good. Yeah, like, like I said, I wasn't sure if maybe you got a uh, basketball. You know, walked on, but you know, ultimately we able to to play under scholarship or not? But, right, uh, right. Yeah. How much? What's the master's program like? Uh, the master's program is pretty uh, extensive. Mm -hmm. uh, you, if you go full time, you can do. Um, you can complete it in two years, mm -hmm. two years, part-time, three. Yeah. So, uh... What would you go for? Same thing? Uh, it'd be fine. It'd be, it'd be, you know, once I, once I can get somewhere and I can start to focus in again mm -hmm. and get back in that school mindset and, and get my mind right, it'll be either between accounting and mm -hmm. finance. Okay. Right. Yeah. Either one. Mm -hmm. Honestly, mm -hmm. either one will serve you well. Right, right. Uh, did, you, did you get the prereqs? Or do you have to do prereqs for that? Because I don't know what you have to do for yeah. sports management. I already have the prereqs oh, for it. Good. Yeah. So right now, it, um, I think I just have an essay to write. Okay. As far as getting accepted, and you know, like I said, just get back in that mindset. Oh yeah, it's huge. Because that 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 that's the that's the biggest yep. thing for me. I I can't imagine having been out for as long as I've been out. Have, you know, having to go back. Mm -hmm. And then when I went. I, I was, you know, took criminology because I thought that made sense. Right. And really, it doesn't really apply. Mm -hmm. But now, if I wanted to go back for anything substantial, I got all kinds of prereqs because criminology doesn't, you know, there's there's little to no math, right. you know, involved. So right. if I was to take, you know, try to get an MBA or something like that, whew, forget it. I'd have to do, I'd spend probably two years doing prereqs, especially part time, you know. Two years doing prereqs before I could even get into a program. Right, so right, right. If you can get it up front while you're young and be done with it, and not have to worry about going back, then that's the way to go. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Because, like you said, once you get out of it, get out of it for any length of time, it's it's tough. Right, you know, right, to get right. back, like you said, the mindset of doing the work and you know stuff that comes easy to you now. In a few years, you'll have lost the the basics that you learned. And it's like back in New York with these slices, man. Right. Yeah. Is, that, is that too much? Is one good or oh, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I actually right. eat one and hopefully I can yes. save the other for the airport. I'm sure we could make some. Did you already buy a plane ticket? I did not. Okay. So you're not, you're not, there's no flight that you I mean, By that means, like, so you gotta get out to a flight. Tell us. Well, can you, you want to put napkins on there? Is that enough? Alright. Um, why the gun? Why the gun, though? Did you ask him that? No. I mean, why are, you, why are you sporting a gun, man? What's, what's the sudden urge to carry a gun? So you never carried one around before? Why? Is well, there something you yeah, threatening you? You feel one? No, I just feel like, you know, coming into a uh, young man, I feel like, you know, I, for protection. 
Okay. Yeah. I mean, no no obvious problems. You have no one's robbed you recently since you've been here. I mean, I know down in Ybor City, the area make you feel uncomfortable, you know. Mm. Nothing like that. Nothing specific. Nothing specific. No ex girlfriends, boyfriend making threats, nothing like that? Not at all. Or current girlfriend's ex boyfriend, I guess is what? It? No. no. Okay. Just you just felt like it was, it was it was the first time in your life you're gonna make this purchase and make this transition, mm -hmm. okay? And just to keep yourself safe. Yes. All right. Okay. Um, with that being said, I mean, I, you know, I, I, which are you paying attention to the news and, the, and what's going on in the community the last uh, couple months? Have it. Have not. I okay. really don't watch the news. Okay. All right. All right. Are you are you aware of the, uh, the the murder rate recently increasing in Tampa? Uh, I've heard people talking about people at my job. Yeah, well, tell me what you've heard. What are they talking about? Um, they're saying that you know people are dying. Something about a serial killer. You've heard about that. You know anything else about that? No. Okay. You have no insight into what that's all about then. Mm -hmm. Okay. I because I mean, a tip would be great, man. Yeah. It's like a hundred thousand dollars too. So for a hundred thousand dollars. Hundred thousand dollars. They pay for the master's degree. No doubt about that. Yeah. Right. So if you uh, know anybody. Wow. About what they're talking. Like, so I, have they got into specifics with you? Anybody at work said uh, anybody at work made mention of maybe some something that would strike you as interesting as far as maybe they might know something. Or I, no. Okay. No, they just mentioned it. But are they scared? I mean, is that why they're bringing it up? Or the, like the women that work there? It seems like it's mostly women. They. I don't think they're scared. I just think they just want to have something to talk about. Okay, all right. But yeah. that didn't prompt you to buy the gun. You're not concerned about that. No, no, no. It doesn't sound like you know much about it. No, no, no. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, all right. So then you bought the gun, and that was because of your own personal decision. Personal decision. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Now, you no intentions and no intentions on doing anything inappropriate with the gun. Not at all. Now, you you kind of like say you're struggling financially with what you're saying. You're, no, you're not contemplating no, no, no. doing anything irrational. Not to yourself or any to to try to get to rob anybody. You're not nothing like that. Not at all. Okay. No. All right. That's what I need. I'm sorry, man. I, I, no. Go ahead. Eat. Let me get some more napkins, man. You good with that water? Can you grab me a water, kid? Yeah. Thanks, man. Um. Man, it's happening to me now. I lost my train of thought. So you said you remember buying it in September at Shooter's World? Mm -hmm. Okay. And that was before any of this stuff popped up. So clearly you were buying it in response to something that had happened. No. Um, so the, the stuff that people have been talking about, word on the street type of stuff, any, any specifics at all? No specifics. I just seem to be, you know, them, them saying this and that, but I feel like it was it was uh you know almost to the point where i've heard it before you know what i'm saying i, I don't know it was if it, it was any different what do you mean you heard it before like how long ago like like even like it just during high school you know like oh it's a serial killer or something like that so just generic yeah just generic yeah, term yeah. general because the serial killer can apply to a lot of different methods or a lot of different ways people are killing people or reasons too right um, and I think that's kind of what makes this one stand out is that we don't have a reason uh -huh. you know we don't know what it is whereas a lot of them like where I went to school I went to Florida State uh -huh. was famous for Ted Bundy uh -huh. you know and that that guy it was all sexually motivated sexually driven and he had a type he knew exactly what he liked uh -huh. and dark long hair right. and it was uh, you know uh, up close and personal type of thing like uh -huh. that. you know usually it's Strangling and you know, uh, or stabbing that sort of thing. That's your usual, what you usually expect from a serial killer. Uh -huh. And in this particular case, like I said, we, I mean, no rhyme or reason. We got, we got nothing on on why this is happening. Uh -huh. So then that might be part of the fear. That might be why people are talking about it so much. Because right, right. you know, if if you're a long haired girl in wherever Ted Bundy is, and you get long dark hair, then you're probably scared. But if you're a six foot or five foot eleven, right. sometimes six foot one right. black male, right. you ain't got any, nothing to worry about. Right. You're not as tight. Right, right. Right? Uh -huh. But I think the reason why so many people are so scared about this one, especially maybe, you know, and, and even though actually more men have been killed than women, mm -hmm. um, 
I think women are particularly concerned about it. You know, already kind of physically vulnerable, right. but they're they're worried about it because they don't know. Like, could be anybody. Right. Could be me. Could be relative. Right. You know, old, young. Mm-hmm. Could be anybody. Right. So I think that's that's what's driving a lot of the, a lot of the fear about what's going on. So and it's it's also unusual, you know. For so right, before you mad, I, I told topics. Do you want to tell me? I, I don't. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, man. Um, and it's you know, yeah. yeah, unusual for if you change your mind, somebody to, to to shoot. Actually, it's mm-hmm. it's also most serial killers, strangling, stabbing. Serial killers. killers. We're talking about serial killers. Oh, is it a workplace conversation? Uh, they're usually shooting, stab, or I'm sorry, they're usually stabbing or strangling or, you know. There's usually some eating. connection with the victim, some little thing that they do with the victim. You know, if you're studying anything like that, I mean, uh, you're not the guy that watches the uh, investigative reports or whatever? No, no. No? Okay. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't a criminology major. That was actually a class at Florida State. History of Serial mm-hmm. Criminology class. Fascinating Very stuff, but I mean, yeah, it's a lot of, obviously there's some things that go on with um, the psyche of an individual like that. Right. Uh, look, man, like I said, I, um, what, what, what airline are you tend on getting out of there? Do you want to know your, um, um, I, like I said, I didn't buy my ticket. Okay. Um, but I'm just, are you planning on, you want to fly out this evening or are you just, as soon as possible? As soon as you yeah, think I'm going to fly out this evening. Okay. You have somebody that'll meet you at the airport over there in New York? Yeah. Or you do? You have somebody up there? Mm-hmm. Is that family or is that? That's uh, a, a close friend. Okay. All right. Do you have anybody uh, uh, here that can I mean, take care of your... Are you going to drive your car to the airport and drop it? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's going to cost you some money, man. Long-term parking? Yeah, well, I just like I said, I just have a relative or I just have my father pick it up. Oh, go and pick it up from there? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Right. Do you want them to witness that you're, you're going, man? You want to make any mention of what's going on? That's entirely up to you whether you want to tell your dad about what this, what's coming, what's transpired today. Okay? Right. Uh, so we're not going to run over and tell your dad or your mom because you're not a child. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Um, besides the phone that you have now, is that an iPhone? It is iPhone. Okay, is it unlocked? Is it locked? It, it may be locked. Okay, is it, is it ring or off, do you know, or you, you have no idea if it's... I'm not sure. Okay, so somebody may be texting or calling right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, the phone's off, so nobody... Can, can they make a Wi-Fi call to you? You can. Okay. You can. Okay. Is what, it high? okay. What app, like Facebook uh, or... It's just regular Wi-Fi. But do you have to have an app to make a phone call with it, or is it just? You know, I think it's just that's how that. App that's how ATT at works. Right, ATT, right. I believe, specifically. ATT. So that's how you communicate with the phone. You don't. Have, you haven't had service you said, for about a month. I mean, is that how you communicate with it? Is you use the Wi-Fi stuff? Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, not to be overly uh, dramatic here, right, but again, like anything else around here, this entire stuff. I appreciate your cooperation with it. Okay, and I with this whole situation. And I think we're we're good with uh, we're getting to the point now where hey, you know you can stay in good standing with your job. But I mean, obviously, with the fire, I don't know if there's a policy mm-hmm. on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I mean, is there a policy on firearms and guns? That okay. uh, you know, to be completely honest, I don't. You know. don't know. Okay, so there may be something in writing that it's immediately terminated upon their you know, or you're allowed to under certain circumstances. Yeah. You don't know. Uh-huh. All right. Well, hopefully for your sake, there's nothing. You know, because obviously you roll the dice with that. But um, again, that's not you know, overly dramatic. But anytime we are investigating any kind of offense, especially involving a, a I said an offense, but any kind of situation involves a firearm, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, because as I pointed out, you've not been charged with a crime. Okay. I mean, you, this is completely a consensual uh, opportunity to talk to you about this, and I appreciate that. But with that being said, we want to make sure that there is, God forbid, we're wrong about you. Mm-hmm. And you've been involved in something, or the gun comes back to something, we have to ask you more questions. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, a lot of what we do, a lot of nowadays, has to do with uh, phone stuff. Mm-hmm. All right. Your phone would capture a lot of what you do in your daily life. Mm-hmm. Right. I imagine my phone does the same thing. Pictures, my where I've been, who I've been with. Mm-hmm. Okay. Stuff that might help you if something does arise in the future for any reason, with a potential alibi if you need it. Mm-hmm. Okay. With that being said, I'm going to ask you this, along with everything else, is may we download the contents of your phone to, uh, in the event that we might need to find out where you were at a certain time to clear you from any potential incurring 
uh, allegations or anything anybody makes. Yes. Is that okay? Yes. All right. It's a, it's a process that our electronic guys do it. Is it a passcode with a number or is it a? Uh, it's a. It's a. a it's, like, yeah, it's like that. It's a uh, 1993 24. 1993 <coughs> 24. Is that your birth? Right? Yeah. And 24 is what? Uh, my my how old I am. Okay. okay. Yeah, right. And it's okay if we can download the contents of that phone. <coughs> and, uh, possible photographs, and you know, there's nothing. There's nothing. We're not going to embarrass you, man. We're not putting that stuff. That's all been done turned internally. So if you, you know, got informing pictures, you and a woman, or you and a man, or something like that, it's not, nothing like that on there, right? Okay. No. I mean, if there is, it's your prerogative. We're not going to make. Heads or tails of that. Okay. We're not going to judge you on that. And don't think that you're the only person that we've asked to, to do this. I mean, this right. is phone number, you know, whatever. This I mean, is common, but said, right. because of the circumstances, we have, we ask you. Okay. Under okay. other circumstances, if you were being investigated for a particular, uh, if you were, if you had been arrested and taken, we took a possession of that property, then, yeah, we would put, the, depending on the nature of the crime, we would be looking into those things. Okay. In this particular case, we're asking, so when you do fly up to New York and pursue your endeavors, mm -hmm. that if there are any allegations brought against you for any reason, especially because it's mainly involved because we've got a firearm in your possession. If someone says, hey, on this day, this guy stuck a gun in my face and tried to rob me, mm -hmm. the phone stuff may be what saves you from getting a phone call from the wait a minute, no, no, this phone, you know, for whatever he was with so-and-so in this time, or he was working, or he has a picture of a selfie and him and somebody else together. Okay. It could go to benefit you a great deal. Yes. So I, I appreciate that, and I, and I think that you'll appreciate that in the end. And this is death by paperwork, because there's another form. Okay. <laughs> it's a bureaucracy, so if you ever do go to work for the government as an accountant or in finance, I don't think finance and government mix, but if that ever were to happen, you'll, you'll see how much paperwork it involves it's ridiculous okay. especially in this day and age right. you know, we don't have pdfs for things we got a piece of paper that we have to right. I know, really. so go to work for a private company that's the moral of the story okay. especially if you're in finance you want to make money <laughs> right how's the pizza is it good Delicious. Where is it from? I don't know. It looks good though. Right. Yeah, I, I I'm gluten intolerant though, so I can't eat I can't really? eat pizza anymore. Yeah, I used to be able to when I was young. Yeah. It's one of those weird things. Man. Right. As you get older, things happen. Right. I can get away with a little bit, but I think a slice of pizza that size would uh, I, I'd be in trouble. Pizza's excellent. <laughs> I don't care if I was from. And I might have to take my chances on so, a slice. So what happens when when you're gluten intolerant mm -hmm. and you eat gluten? So it basically all kinds of digestive problems because mm -hmm. your body can't process it. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the protein in wheat. That's mm -hmm. what gluten or wheat and some other grains. Mm -hmm. But so you know, it's just makes you feel sick. Mm -hmm. I mean, sick to your stomach and right. just and not good. Any any rashes or anything? No, I, I don't get that, but there are some people that have true celiac mm -hmm. disease, which is allergic to gluten. Right. There's difference between intolerance and allergic. And interestingly, my son, who's, who's little, has it where uh, it causes uh, asthma for him. Mm -hmm. You got him off. That's what I told him, man. I told him death by paper. Uh, yeah, this is for the phone. Causes uh, asthma. That's that's his reaction to it, which is strange. As soon as we got him off gluten, no more asthma. So, where are the keys to your car? Do you know where the keys are? Do you have them? I don't. You don't know. Okay. Just some officer asthma. All right. This is uh, again. This is for your phone. All right. And I appreciate you doing that. Uh, I, said, I think it helps. So when you do leave the area and something comes to roost after the fact, that we can have everything we need to make sure that hey, like. like we're not going to pursue him any further because he's been um, cleared from this. And as I say, the phone nowadays for everybody is such a big part of everybody's life that yeah. you pretty much, whatever you do in your daily life, I bet we can find it in your phone. Right, right. I, mean, I, I don't know if you're any different, but right. you can you know, go to somebody's phone, you can tell what kind of person they are. All right, it's consent to search cellular phone services. And again, I would encourage you, like the other phones, is to read it. This is I, and I'll ask you to print your name here. Hereby voluntarily give my full consent to the Tampa Police Department or the law enforcement agency they deem necessary to access, search, seize, print, copy, or otherwise save in any form any cellular phone, excuse me, any and all cellular phones, cellular telephone services, SD card, media, memory card data, 
SIM card data applications and all associated data pertaining to those applications or the features existing in the accounts listed on the second page of this form. Second page of this form would just be I'm going to describe the form. Okay. Like I said, I'm going to hand this to you to read. You don't, you don't have to commit what I said to memory, just read it. But I'm going to move on to the second page. It's an Apple iPhone. What, what generation? Uh, uh, iPhone 7. 7. No jokes? Hmm? No jokes? <laughs> Have you seen his phone? No. Four. Wow. Four. It's a five. Oh, it's a five. Okay, okay. It's a five. Five. I don't think he knows what he's got. He says I think two. It's a four. He told me nah. two. Actually, he called it an H phone. Yeah, it came before the iPhone. It's an H phone. My wife calls it, yeah. Hey, I need to get a new one. It's an iPhone. I saw the smirk, though. I don't think I did. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, thought, I, too. I thought it was the four. Yeah. But the, the, the five is, is good. The five is longer. I think it's a four. It's not I don't a four. Think I, I can't wait if I can, but I can pull it up. You know, before we do any further, I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to find out what it is. Uh, and what is your password? Uh, 1993 24. And, all right. I'm going to cross this stuff because we're not doing computers, we're not doing uh, internet Okay, so I'm going to do this stuff right here. Initial in there. Just because I'd encourage you to read that and then sign and date if you agree to all this. And then we'll uh, turn over to page two. Sign. Yeah, sign right there again. Uh, Mike Essential. You, you redo that. Like I, said, and it's, it, I didn't read that part to you, but by all means. Um, you're a college grad, no problem with reading, right? I don't want to make yeah, any yeah. Okay. I can do better. I will do better at reading. Oh. As far as, you know. Doing more of it? Doing more of it. <laughs> <coughs> you and everybody else, I think. Well, at least, well, he cheats. He does all your Yeah, books. yeah, I listen to Audible. Play the long drive. So what, what's better, Audible or reading? I like both. I've, I've been read. I, I, I like to read, but because I drive so much, I listen to the books while I'm driving. And if it's a good voice actor that's reading the book, then Audible is pretty awesome. If it's a bad voice actor, then it stinks. No, so they're actually reading verbatim from the book, right? Yeah, yeah. and there's like turn to page. You know, if it's some some weird thing, so you read along. Right. No. Yeah, they are reading verbatim what's in the book, even if it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Sometimes. So yeah, that's good. You know, that's a good question. What is is there a benefit to one way or the other? Are they both essentially the same? Right. Allegedly, audiobooks are still beneficial, but I don't know if they're as beneficial as reading. The second page. It's just what we you just saw me do is it uh, describes your phone and your password. Just initial next to that. If uh, it, It's saying that you've freely given that information, essentially. Yeah. And then down here again, I, if you can fill in your, your name. Sign. And then I think it's right down below. Yeah, print there. And then sign below, please. Thank you. We got a tech guy that's going to do the download on that. I'm not sure the exact amount of time that's going to take, but I'll, as soon as I find out, I'll let you know. Because like I said, it might, you know, anytime you, you know, get it. Hey, look, guy, I'm going to head out of here. I'll let them know that get that back. Okay, but it, it, uh, it shouldn't take that long. Oh. I'm not a tech guy. Do you know how much uh, storage is on that phone? No, is it 32 or is it a 16? It's a 16. Yeah. Uh, those are usually pretty quick. Quick. Okay. Yeah. The smaller the Hard drive on the phone, the faster it goes. Yeah, I have no idea what you two are talking about right now. So. <laughs> what do I got? What do I got here? Uh, you probably have uh, megabytes. You don't have gigabytes on that phone. I don't even know what that means. You know, I, I think offense that if I had any idea what the hell that meant. <laughs> he probably doesn't even know what megabytes are because he's too young to have ever seen anything that had a storage space that small. Everything's probably been gigabytes, right? Since well, you've been right, right. Why don't we go with this test? Are you a social media guy? Oh, uh, not really. Not really. No Facebook. No. Instagram? Instagram, I do have an Instagram, but I don't really post or anything. Okay. Like Facebook, your yeah, Facebook, uh, what else? What else is popular? Snapchat. 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 You have Snapchat? I do. Okay. But I like I don't really post or anything. Okay. Like that. All right. I get on it sometimes and watch other people snap. Okay. Yeah. And what is what exactly is Snapchat? Well, just video. It's Instagram, but video. Just people post their own interesting right, right. things on there and mm -hmm. other people can view it? Right. Okay. 
Do you, uh, speaking of which, I mean, I, I always equate that with uh, friends, relationships, but I mean, I, you don't have any kids, right? You're not, you're not a dad yet, right? No, no. Okay. No. I mean, I, you know, I'm thinking about that. I got I to become more familiar with that stuff as my kids get older to be familiar with what dangers play in that <laughs> stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but my daughters are light years ahead of me, so I'm, I got to really rely on somebody else to tell me what's inappropriate. I'm just going to line through this one. How about you, man? Yeah, you got a steady, a steady relationship in your life? Uh, not as of right now. Just like I said, just focusing on my finances. Um, you, you said, is your, are your finances that? Are you, do you have money socked away? Or are, you, are you just trying to you live paycheck to paycheck? What's your What's your financial situation? Right now, it's paycheck to paycheck, but I, I think it'd get better. So, okay. What are you looking to do uh, besides the basketball thing? You know, it uh-huh. doesn't pan out for a career. Right. What, are you, what are you, you said, sports manager? What are you an agent or? Yeah, I want to be an agent. I mean, that'd be you know ultimate is dream job. Have, yeah, it'd be dream job. Right. You know. Um, but um, uh, if that doesn't even work, uh, I'll probably be in the. I think I'll probably go more production side, film maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, you know, once, once I figure out, you know, how things will go, but maybe film or uh, maybe stay in the marketing arena. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Film as far as what? What kind of film? Like TV film. Oh, like production uh, stuff? Like production. Oh, so, that, so out of the sports management uh, yeah, field altogether? Yeah, completely out. Uh-huh. That's interesting. So why, you know, what, did something recent spark your interest after school? To get, I mean, otherwise, why not pursue that while you're doing studies in school? Like, why, did something happen recently? That well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying if that, if the sports management doesn't work out, I just say film. I, I like how TV sitcoms are set up. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's just something you recently taken an interest in. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the sports management thing, man, it, you're not absolutely sports management or bust. You got, okay. Yeah, I got a backup plan. Yeah, yeah, I got a backup plan. Okay. I'm going to have options. No, that's good. No, that's good. I mean, you know, I mean, not to say you're a kid, but I mean, you're, you're a young guy. And mm-hmm. A lot of people put a faith in, the, hey, I'm going to do this. Now, you respect the ambition. But it's always, you know, you don't always think of that backup plan because mm-hmm. you know, there's a possibility this won't work out. Right. But you sound like you got it squared away. Right. Well, that's good, man. Is this, uh, have you always been like this? You always seem to have your head screwed on tight, or? Yeah, I mean, just want to be successful. That's all I want to do is just be successful. No matter what it is, or no matter know? what it is. Okay. And is success uh, determined by you talk about finance? Is that finances? Yeah. Is that is that your idea of success? Is I got to have got to have a stable financial. Uh, I mean, the finances Foundation. allow you to do what you want to do, and I just want to be happy. Are, are your folks in a pretty good position if they were able to help you that much through private school? Or are they? Yeah, they're pretty in a pretty good position. Because some sometimes people look at it that way because their family struggled and they don't want to struggle, or other people it's their family's successful right. and they want to follow in that same success. Cause yeah. they, well, I, I know you know my parents; they they've worked hard for. You know what 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 they have, and mm-hmm. I've just seen them get up every day and go to work and do mm-hmm. what they need to do. So I know that's what it takes. If you don't want me asking, what do your parents do? Uh, they have a cosmetology school. Oh, okay. they but they run a cosmetology school mm-hmm. together. Yeah. Oh, all right, very good. Mm-hmm. And is that I imagine that's uh, in the town of country area or town? Uh, no, it's uh, they have one on Del Mabry, and they have one in Valrico. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's it? What's the name? Sure, of it? International Hair Academy. Sure. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I know. I don't know where that is. In Del Mabry, uh it's like the Carroll area. Yeah. 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 I've, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's that's a. Uh, okay. It's a big, big establishment there. A big place. Okay. Mm-hmm. Good for them. So that that's their that's their operation. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. How long have they been doing that? Uh, <clears throat> they've been doing that a long time. <laughs> Can't put any years on that, but they've been doing it a long time. How did they get into it? Were they did they start off like he was a barber and she was a you know hairdresser or? Yeah, well, my dad he's done a lot, but my mom she just had good connections and she was a hairdresser. <laughs> okay, so they, they just used what they were you know they, they worked hard at this level and then moved on and yeah. made, made it grow into something else. Right. Okay, so you got you've got that you've that foundation of uh, how to do things the right way. Right, right. Okay, all right, good. This job. 
Det er det, det er for sådan. Ja, but all costs. Right. It wears on you, right. especially with a family. It definitely wears on you. But the, oh, the uh, talking about your your family's business. Is that something you ever considered going into? Was you, were you ever kind of groomed for that, or did, did they ever? Just well, they. I mean, I, I can if I, yeah, I can if I want, but that's not kind of what I want to do. Mm-hmm. You, you didn't. You were. That was never your interest. Uh, not really. Okay. Are yeah. you the oldest of the? No. The kids? No. no. You have any other siblings that have gone? Yeah, my that sister. Way. She's she's gone that way. She's she's she does hair, but I mean. If I if I want to I can. I right. mean I know it. I can do it. Kind of a backup plan? Yeah, kind of a you know, if 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 I want to I right. can do it. No. Well, you know what? You go to school, go into finance and maybe you do get into the business and maybe that business grows mm-hmm. because you've got the you know, you've got the education to turn what they built into an empire. Right, you right. know? I mean that's it's always a possibility. Right, right, right. So. It's not a bad place to be when your parents own a couple of businesses. Right. So. Yeah, I, I think I, I asked about your brother. I didn't realize you have an older sister. Uh, yeah, older sister. Older than you, or just she's older than you? Younger, your brother. She's a little older than me. Are you, so there's three kids. Mm-hmm. It's your sister's the oldest. You're the middle, and then your youngest uh, brother. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. And she's kind of in the family business. Yeah. Uh, here or she has her own place, her own thing going. Yeah, she has her own thing going. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Same same theme, but Different. it's not attached to no. mom and dad. No. Okay, good. Did she go to school as well? Graduate from college? Uh, not uh, not yeah, here in Tampa. ACC. Okay, all right. And then uh, your your parents they they born and raised here in Tampa? Uh, yeah. They go to school at the same schools as you did. Plant TC is that like a family thing or is it? No, they didn't go to any of those schools. My dad, I'm not sure. He went to. Um, Lake Wells. Lake oh, Wales. okay. Okay. So, so out of Tampa area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But and then my mom went to Tampa Bay Tech. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Lake Wells was a football school back in the day. Was it? Big football school. Yeah, it's, it's your neck of the woods, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Other than Polk County. For exactly. You don't. You, do, you don't have your car keys. I don't. Okay. You can have the car keys. I don't know. Hang on, man. Sorry, man. Yeah, I used to work out in Polk County, Ain City, mm-hmm. and uh, still live out there. But yeah, I'm very familiar with Lake Wells. I was actually just over there on Sunday. Right. Um, we've got some friends that raise goats, and uh, they just had a baby. Mm-hmm. So we took some of their goats to help them out to babysit them for a little while so that they, you know, brand new newborn, you know, so well, they're right. overwhelmed. Right. So we took some of their animals back to our place so that they could be, uh, you yeah, know, have a little bit of relief mm-hmm. as much as we could do. Right. But no, it's nice. Down there. I don't know. Have you, have you been? See where your dad grew up? Yeah, or? I've been. Bob yeah. Tower and all that stuff. Uh-huh. That's, a, that's a real pretty park. Right. I, I've been uh, a couple of times, but not anything recently. Yeah. So I don't know anything about Where's the the school that you're going to in New York? Is that like upstate or is it? Yeah, it's, to... it's Queens. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. but so they, they have three campuses though. Queens, mm-hmm. they have Manhattan, and they have Staten Island. Okay, so that I mean, right in the city. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, I I prefer to be out away from all. That. I come in come into Tampa, and Tampa's big enough for me. I just come here to work, but as far as my time off, I want to be out in the middle of nowhere. Right, right, right. right. Exactly. But I I went to Manhattan once just for like a long weekend, mm-hmm. just to basically just to see it. And it right. was it was cool, but you know what? I couldn't live there. You couldn't live there. No. Well, I think about being in a little tiny apartment for the price of what you pay for a house in Florida, you know. Goodness. Yeah. It is. It'll it'll make you it'll make you think twice. Mm-hmm. It'll make you, you know, but hopefully, I don't, I don't have to, you know, struggle any longer. I'll just say that. Right. Yeah. Well, if you get, if you got plans for for a master's degree, if, if you if you pick the right thing, then even in New York, you'll be okay. You know, I mean, you you go into finance. And most of those jobs are six figures or close mm-hmm. right out of school. Right. So in New York, 
you're not going to be rich, but you'll be you'll be you'll be comfy. Okay, you know? right, right, exactly. Yeah, and yeah, New York is a it's an expensive place. Now I'm sure the locals don't go to the touristy places like we did when we were there. You know, but uh, no, it was a uh, it was a different experience. It felt like I was on a movie set. You know, when you're walking down the street, you got high rises on each side of me. Right, right, you know, right. within seems like a few feet of each other. Right. But uh, kind of surreal. Exactly. I don't think we we went to Brooklyn, but just barely into Brooklyn and ma mainly Manhattan. Mm -hmm. But we were only there for three and a half days. You know, so what can right. you, what can you really do? We couldn't really explore. So. Right. So I didn't realize that school was right in Queens. Yeah, we got one in Queens. And we got one in Manhattan and one Staten Island. But the actual basketball program is the Queens campus? Yeah, uh, that's the main campus. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. That's the is that where the master's program would be too? Exactly. Oh, that's probably still. Well, I mean, you can go, you could do a master's program at Manhattan. Mm -hmm. You could do it. Depending on the field, probably? Exactly. Or is it? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, a lot of schools are set up that where we, you know, if they have multiple campuses, the master's program for this is over here. For this, it's over here, so depending on what you choose, you might be in a different place. Mm -hmm. But I, I would imagine that Queens would be a little bit more reasonable than right, right. if you go to the Manhattan campus. Exactly. Oh, absolutely. Especially if you're trying to live close by. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not cheap to live in there. But it's interesting. It's interesting. Like, I don't know what I expected, like Central Park. Uh -huh. I don't know what I expected, but it was definitely different. You felt like you were you know, away from the, exactly. the city. Right. Um, that was... I don't know. It's interesting how they can pull it off. I guess you don't realize how, how big that park really is until you're there. Right. But it was an interesting trip. Right. For sure. But as long as you had a good time. Yeah, absolutely. I did. Yeah. Had a blast. Saw some people that, you know, because a lot of people end up in New York. You mm -hmm. know, there's a reason why there's six million or however many people are in the city now. Right, right. Because people from all over the country end up there for their career. So I had people that I hadn't seen in a long time from college mm -hmm. that. That's where they ended up working because uh -huh. you know people gravitate towards that city. Right, right, right. So got to see people, got to you know eat a lot of interesting places, mm -hmm. you know stuff they don't have down here, and that yeah, was good, good time. Yeah, I, I could have spent a couple more days, but like I said, I, I really don't go. think I could live there. I don't right. think I could do it. But I definitely go back. The go weather. I uh, see. I like cold weather. Okay. Now living in cold oh, weather is different yeah. than visiting. Yeah, so snow, yeah. you're scraping ice off your windshield. Right. That I don't want to do that when I wake up in the morning. Wow. But I do like it when it's cool and cold, and, and I you know, I wouldn't mind living a little further north. Right, right. But uh, nothing like Florida, though. Yeah. And then especially nothing like Tampa here. Yeah, in the summer and oof, just yeah. miserable, mm -hmm. miserable hot. But no, yeah, it was fun. I would definitely go back. I went to school, like I said, I went to Florida State. So, not that far. No, FSU. Mm hmm Okay. Having a rough year. Yeah. yeah. We'll get through it. Yeah, got to. Jimbo's going to do it. He'll turn it around. Yep. Yeah. I, and I was lucky enough to be there when they won a national championship. And that's, oh, that's, that's yeah. a lot of fun. Right. When you're going to college in a year that they win a championship, I mean, there's, there's nothing like it. So, hopefully we'll get back to those years soon. Right, right. I think so. We got to get uh, Francois healthy. And then, then we'll be in better shape. Yeah. As you may have guessed, I'm more of a football guy than a basketball guy. Absolutely. I see that. <laughs> uh, NFL team? I'm not a huge pro, pro football fan. College. So, yeah. Big, that's that's really, on, on Saturdays, I'm definitely watching my game. On Sundays, if I catch some football, that's great. But okay. I'm usually trying to get other stuff done. Okay. I mean, if I had to root for anybody, it would be the home team. Okay. You know, okay. But I'm not. I'm not passionate about any NFL team. Okay. You know, yeah. Florida State, different story. Okay. You know, that's... And then I married a Gator, so go figure. So we got the, the oh, rivalry. Wow. Yeah, it was, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah, 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 yeah. So once a year, you know, usually at Thanksgiving, we uh, we have our game that, you know, it gets a little uncomfortable because mm -hmm. we're both rooting for different teams. But other than that, even though I'm a Knoll, I will now generally root for the Gators when they're playing. Uh -huh. As long as they're not playing my team and as long as – them winning doesn't mess up my year, you uh -huh. know, because there might be teams I need them to lose against, you know, depending on what's going on. Right. But no, I will, I will generally cheer for for my wife's team. But uh, yeah, yeah. One day you'll you, you may find well, out. I you know, I don't know who's who's the rival for uh, St. John's. Saint John. Our rival is 
our rival is Seton Hall. Yep. Seton Hall. I'm so if you ever find yourself married to a woman who went to that Seton Hall, you'll it, it, it can't work. <laughs> it can't work. Yeah, it's just one day out of the year when you play each other. Right. Then it, it, it'd be a little rough, but okay. you can get past it. Okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> right, right. But no, it's... Uh, yeah, I, I like going back, and I understand the appeal of wanting to go back. You know, if I could have spent more time, I definitely would have. Found your car keys, man. So they're going through dealing with all that stuff now, man. Uh, yeah, I appreciate the phone. We get the phone. It's going to be uh, yeah, it won't be too long. I appreciate it. if you don't mind sticking around, just to have that downloaded, and then uh, we'll get that back to you. Okay. And then we can, you know, and then whatever you want to do from there. Okay. All right. Um, I missed the conversation, man. You kept walking out of here, but ask me a million questions. Yeah. Miss anything? No. We're talking about how your marriage can work <coughs> if you marry somebody from a rival mm. school. It can be done. Just one day a year. I don't really about that, yeah. One like, day a year is a little college, rough. Since my, so my wife, so. Right. And I, I went to college down here. She went to college in Illinois, so there's no rivalry at all. Mm. Is your wife Florida? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh. So. Well, what's your St. John's problem? Yeah, you just talk about Seton Hall. Seton Hall. Seton Hall. Yeah. Jersey. Jersey. Yeah. Okay. Your family is, uh, you said you have family in Jersey. Is oh, that yeah. like Seton Hall people? Yeah, no, they're not No. Okay. <coughs> Interesting fellow, man. I'm, I mean, I'm a sports guy, so when I hear college basketball, I want to ask you a bunch of questions. I hope you don't mind about it. Oh, that's fine. Okay. So, I mean, you started, you told me, you, you walked on, did you, were you on the team? Were you redshirted? How did you, what was your... Yeah, I walked on um, to St. John's, and it was just my NCAA eligibility. So, it, um, I, it was a couple steps I didn't do, a couple steps I didn't take to... So you weren't actually eligible to play because of certain things? Right. Okay. Was it grades or something else? No, it wasn't grades. It was just eligibility. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So you, you were on a team, but you weren't actually able to dress and sit on the bench for the game? No, I did that. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. Just couldn't play. Couldn't play. Okay. So you're allowed, they allow you to do all that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. The NCAA rules, I know, are, are tricky. But you're allowed to do that. You're allowed to be on the bench. You're allowed to sit there and be part of the games. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because St. John's made a run. Was it like a couple years ago? Were you on the team when they made a run to... They had 21 season, didn't they? Were they yeah, did, did that they, was 2010, 2011. Okay. And then 2013, 2014. Were you on either one NIT. of those teams? No. NIT, that, yeah, NIT, that's, that's right. right. That was the year I left. That okay. was 2011, 2012, 2013. Okay, so you just missed on the NIT. I know they were on the bubble and making the dance, and I think they probably should have, but they, you know, like the, how that goes. But they went to the NIT, that's right. That's right. right. But you weren't a part of any of that stuff. Exactly. Ah, okay. All right. That's exciting stuff, man. It's, it's mm -hmm. exciting for the players as it is for us knuckleheads that are, uh, you know, following brackets. Right. Do you guys that? you guys get any of that stuff at all? Uh, what do you mean? Brackets, the whole March Madness oh, yeah, craziness. Yeah, they're deep into that. Yeah. The players even? Do the players oh. get into that at all, or are oh, they? Absolutely. No, they do. Okay. I mean, other than picking themselves to win it all, all the way to the end, are the wow. guys that deviate from that and say like, no, we don't have a chance. We're going against Kentucky, and there's not a chance. So I'm thinking Kentucky going all. Yeah, no, no, we they'll, we'll choose ourselves, St. John's. All the way. All the way. Okay. <laughs> and, and, but then everybody else is going to be based on what they know. Exactly. How uh, Do you guys have insight to where your brackets end up better than other people, or is it just as crazy once you guys get into it as well? Is it you know, the crazy upset, you know, the, the, the Georgetown being beaten by the 15, is that like, is that screw up brackets on your end as well, or do you guys have some insight into these smaller schools that the rest of us guys don't? Uh, we, I mean, we, we have, an, I would say we have enough insight. Okay. Mm -hmm. Obviously, against your opponents because you're playing. Uh, St. John's still the Big East. Yeah, still Big East. Still Big because mm -hmm. because what uh, who's left in the Big East? Uh, we got not many people because the Big East has has changed. Yes, I think Georgetown is still in the Big East. Villanova's still in the Big East, right? Villanova's still mm -hmm. in the Big East. Syracuse may still be be in the Big East. Okay. Um, no, wait, I think Syracuse went to ACC. But they they may have yeah I, I yeah I, I haven't kept up uh, too much I know there's a lot of change a lot of the uh, like you were saying I mean but you've been out of it for a few years now right mm -hmm. okay you still follow I mean, you still follow St John's basketball and all that stuff you're still a big uh, fan even after playing you still yeah yeah follow yeah. the team as a casual as a as yeah. a fan I'm Ch I'm Carolina Chapel Hill oh you you actually are a Chapel Hill Carolina yeah. fan yeah so, so St John's yeah I, they're my boys and but. Realistically, I'm Chapel Hill. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Realistically, 
Did you ever consider going? Uh, I mean, did you try? Yeah, I, I, I tried, didn't get accepted. It's very hard to get oh, accepted. Yeah, yeah, nah, that's what very I hard. But I did have a friend that got it, get it got accepted. So okay. Uh, you're talking about playing basketball after this, as far as that I mentioned the European league. Is that uh, is that something you're considering? Yeah. Is that now? How does that work? As far as uh, is is there amateur leagues here in the states, or is it all yeah, overseas? It, there there's amateur leagues here in the states, and uh, depending on what you want to do, you want to go the European route, you can do that. Um, you, you you'll you'll see you'll see your money. You know you'll see your money. You'll see um, a lot of your money depending on what kind of contract you sign in what league you're in um, as far as like bracket wise if mm -hmm. you go to Australia or you go to Venezuela okay. or, you know okay. depending That's, on yeah, right. you yeah, it's not all European it's I mean right. all over the world now mm -hmm. so but I think I'm, I, I want to do in state Okay, mm -hmm. and I want to stay within the NBA association. Okay, so yeah, that's the Legal Magic thing, something like that. we went to we went to Legal Magic game. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's okay. like a feeder feeder okay. league, right? For the Magic, well, a feeder league for any team, but the this particular team is associated with the Magic. Mm -hmm. So minor leagues and so exactly. basketball has its very is yep. its version of minor leagues too. Right, right, I was right. a baseball guy, so I'm familiar with how the baseball thing works. But as far as basketball, beyond college basketball, and that in between, I know there are amateur leagues, but I didn't know to what extent locally they uh, they have them. They do have them like that. Huh? Right, 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 right. They do. Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Staying more like uh, local to where, one particular area within the NBA system? Yeah, I want to stay within the NBA system because. Um, NBA D League, which is now the G League, D -League. Okay. Okay. which is now the G League. Oh. But I want to stay within the system because it's the closest thing to where I want where I want to go. Yeah. It, it'll, that, you think that, if you get too far removed from that, then you'll then, miss. Yeah, that I mean, opportunity. You, you just you miss out on those connections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's in state, not not out of, out of the right. So and I guess once you're then up against uh, the. Particular country's best players are probably overshadowing a lot of the American players that have gone over there to play in right. their home country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're they're the ones with the scouts from those particular areas looking at those those uh, local guys from that particular country because they're the ones that are being those are the, the steals. Exactly. Yeah, I mean it's kind of it's kind of like you go overseas, you play, you may you know you may do your thing, but if you're not seen. Right, you know, you know, it's really, it's really, it's really not, it's, it's not. You're not getting the, you're not getting the publicity you need. You're and not, and depending on what city you end up in, mm -hmm. probably more popular in some cities than there would be in others. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what, uh, the experience though would be outstanding. Though, to go like to another country. I mean, I don't know if you are you a world traveler. Do you and your family had, you know, since you were a kid, you guys travel uh, abroad a lot. Have you ever been overseas? No, no, not a traveler. Okay, so I mean, that to me that would be is that something you that would. Interest you, or are you not at all interested in you know at, at Europe, Australia? Did, uh, you know, I, I got enough to see in the United States. I'm not worried about that. Uh, I mean, I, I do some traveling. I do some traveling, but um, that'd be a hell of an experience to go play, you know, basketball in Rome or something, and, and experience the culture and all that. And I mean, that'd be an amazing experience, I would think. Right, right, right. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'd go. I mean, if the opportunity presents itself, and and that's what's. The eye on the prize kind of thing is like, look, I'll, but I'm not interested in the, uh, the immersion in the culture. I'm interested in playing the sport, well, wherever that takes me. Culture, yeah, you definitely got to be embedded into the culture. I mean, because I think that comes first. Okay, but sport for sure. That that's like wh wherever I'll, I'll I'll do the right things, but I want to keep focus on what I'm trying to accomplish, which is ultimately playing the NBA or associate myself with the NBA in some way. Absolutely. Okay. Is that common for, for players to move on to being agents? Is that like a, uh, is that you a don't see thing? You don't see it often. You don't see it often. But um, it happens. It happens. I would imagine that uh, the players, would, have, if they had that aspiration, would have uh, would, do, would they have an advantage or do you think it's a disadvantage by being a player? Can, I, you, can you explain and say, hey, I know this side of things. I'm going to be the guy to, to, to push in this direction because I know I think it's, it's best for you. I think it's just dependent on the individual. Because playing basketball and handling finance is two completely different things. Right. Mm -hmm. But if 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 you have that niche for numbers and, and you can do that, 
and handle you know because when when you're when you're focused on basketball it's just all about you know pretty much putting the ball in the basket you mm -hmm. know on the court and you know right it's doing whatever you gotta do to, to make your play better mm -hmm. so i mean you're not really focused on the the, the number side of things and, and things like that handling the contract so it's it's completely yeah, i guess it's specifically business so that not that being able to play the game doesn't necessarily equate it to being able to handle the business side of it. That's correct. Cool. That makes sense. So you I mean you say you might be a I'm, I'm cool with the players and they know I'm used to be one of them and I know what it's like, but they, they got to trust that you also know how to handle yourself when it comes to the uh, the suits. Right. Because otherwise they're going to miss out on you know ultimately it's about their you know their contract their their financial situation. Exactly. And yeah, obviously for yourself as well as like you're going to if you get the contract for them then you get the percentage of that so it benefits you as well mm -hmm. so having that knowledge would also um you know increase your chances of becoming more financially stable mm -hmm. well, that's interesting stuff man. man i wish the best luck that's, that's kind of a you know after after tonight we probably you know we may lose touch but i you know I, obviously i'm gonna remember your name i mean it's a you know it's a distinct name to begin with but i, I definitely like to see that uh, in the future come up and hopefully you guys see me on tv <laughs> uh, no that'd, that'd be outstanding say, oh, yeah, yeah i'd sit and talk to that guy for a while absolutely man. share your pizza with him give you a shout out <laughs> hopefully by then i learned how to snapchat or instagram <laughs> or whatever it is you guys are using by then yeah so you're third generation with that same name third generation it is, a, it is it's well it's a unique name to us but maybe it was a more common name, you know, where your, your grandfather was the first one to have it. Mm -hmm. So probably, what, born in the 30s, 40s, 50s? Uh, he was born in the 20s. 20s? Your grandfather was? My grandfather, 20s. Okay. Yeah. How old is your, if you don't mind me, how old is your dad? My dad is 54. Oh, okay. So, right, so your grandfather waited late in life to to have a family, at least. Right. Okay. Well, he will. They, he has a lot of kids, so. So he just was. Dad just came toward the end of the uh, <laughs> exactly. run. Exactly. <laughs> All right. How okay. many kids? Like how many? Your dad had how many? How many siblings? Uh, mm, eight, nine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of kids. All all in this area. You said Lake Wales. Are they from? Is your dad's family from? From that from Lakeland area, or is it from out of state completely? Uh, they're, yeah, all, all from Lake Wells. All from, uh, Lake Wells. Huh. You were born here in Tampa, though. Huh? You were born here in Tampa? Yeah. Okay, so uh, you guys still have family in Lake Wells? Are you back and forth, or? Uh, no, 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 no back and forth from here. Okay, I mean, you, you, did your dad still have family in Lake Wells? Were you guys visit family over there at all, or? Uh, he doesn't go, he doesn't go back often. No, no. I mean, I'm, not, I'm saying like it's way, it's, yeah, a, it's yeah, like they, an hour away, yeah, yeah, right? They, they, yeah. they, they visit, but it's not like, you know, he, he's making those trips back and forth. Okay. Like close family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not over there every other weekend uh, getting to know family or cousins over there. Right. Okay. Do you have a large family? I know you have your sister and your brother yeah, besides that. You, extend, you keep in touch with the extended family? Mm-hmm. That's, so, yeah, that's one thing I never really, uh, my family's very, very compact. I have a lot of extended uh, my right. wife's side of the family. They have a lot of aunts and uncles and things like that. That I just never got into that relationship. Not really. Right. And so once this phone's done, man, if you don't mind hanging around, I appreciate it. Are you, are you good? You want more pizza? You want another bottle of water? No. Once that thing's finished up, we can, you know, yeah, you just make a decision on what you want to do from there. Yeah, I just, just wanna. No, I'm sure you want your phone. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, I imagine. Like I said. You know, there's no. That's that's probably most of your your contacts and your right. your, your lifeline, so to speak. Right. I think I have two phone numbers memorized, and that's it. Yeah. So I appreciate. Yeah. If you don't mind waiting around, we'll finish. We'll get that uh, down, and then you can, you know, uh, I'll give you a ride back to your car, and then from there, you tend to take a flight out. Yeah. You have an airline picked out yet? You know, you. No, I don't have anything picked out. I was going to do that once I got back. Okay. So. Still. Do you, uh, what's that? Do you want to, I mean, do you need uh, access to the internet stuff to work on? I forgot to do that. Get you a computer or something? Do you want to start looking at flights? Uh, I you mean, something like that? Yeah, I mean, I can. I mean, if you're sitting here, if you, you don't mind hanging out, if you're waiting for the phone, then I can at least accommodate you with, uh, if that, if you want to get that squared away. Yeah. You want to do something like that? Mm -hmm. uh, I could probably rig up a, uh, a laptop in here with some internet access and then 
you can start searching for a measure for uh do you have a price range hopefully if the flight is still available yeah uh, yeah well, is there one in particular you're looking for or are you just sometime tonight uh as soon as possible okay because i was supposed to i wanted to meet on campus to when I, once I got there, talk about the job. So I'm kind of. Do you have a job waiting for you on campus? Somewhat, kind of. Doing what? Uh, campus recreation. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, perfect. So that might be something. You get involved in St. John's uh, aspect of things. You might end up making a career out of something there involved with the. Uh, we'll with see. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, good faculty. And I just hope all the best. You know, yeah. I just. We'll see. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Once once he gets back, I'll uh, get a computer and uh, the way at least he can you know while you're you know being patient for the phone, we'll uh, you can start at least pricing it out, get an idea. All right. Okay. Yeah. You see, you say you traveled before. Yeah. I, I, you kind of glazed over that. You uh, you you are travel. You were did travel outside of the country or just around the United States? Uh. Yeah. No. Not outside of the country. I really I really don't travel like that. No. 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 Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I missed you, you know, other than New York and back to Florida, is there any other places? You know, I mean, Jersey. I mean, besides that, any no. other places that you've explored? Uh, Maybe through college, were you, you were going out on like? Uh, oh well, I mean, college trips and stuff. Yeah, like, college trips. We went to a few trips. But yeah, no, I don't mean like uh, over. I mean, I don't mean traveling for the team. I mean like before that, like oh, getting no. you know, like were you you know going to do recruiting visits or uh, no. checking out campuses, nothing like that. Mm. Well, you did sit on St. John's from the... Uh, Pretty much. They offered me the most money. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And so that was the, the, the reason. Mm hmm Okay. So it wasn't, uh, you know, I you know the family always wanted to go to St. John's, or I had relatives and family that grew up in St. John's were uh, St. You know, John's through and through, nothing like that. It just mm -hmm. came down to who was offering you the best opportunity. Best opportunity. Okay. Yeah. Mm hmm But yeah, and, and but you obviously enjoy your time there. It made the most of it. Absolutely. Yeah. I have. How are the grades and everything? You do, uh, you do well in school? Great. I mean, obviously, you graduated with a degree, so you did something, right? Yeah, uh, I mean, grades were pretty good. Um, it could have been better, but I, I think this time around, me getting my master's, mm -hmm. they'll be that much better. Okay, so a more, you're going to put forth a little more effort into mm -hmm. uh, into that? Into the books. Do you think that uh, the sports took it away from the education a little bit? Somewhat. That's a lot of, I mean, that's a lot of commitment. It is. I mean, your schedule's got to be, what, you know, early in the morning and then in between classes. Oh, yes. And then right back to practice in the evening. Three practices a day. Yeah. Three. Three. So, so I imagine first thing in the morning. Five a.m. Five to eight, eight, and depending on if you had, um, depending on if you had night class, mm -hmm. um, you would, I mean, I'm sorry, early morning class, you would leave early, but it'd be from five, it'd be on the court at 5.25. Um, and then from 525 to about, like I said, 8, we will stop and then do yoga. So yeah, and then we're back at it again. Um, depending on if you had class, we're back at it again, 2-ish. Oh, and then so afternoon. Yeah, yeah, okay. so about 2-ish to 4. And then one more, like, workout session okay. at night. And, and they will switch that up. Okay, so that was more that like, that was more weights and that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So either we would do the workout session twenty four, uh, two ish to um, like three thirty four, or we would do the workout session later at night. So okay, like three three practices a day, and it, it was it was hectic, but yeah, it was your job. It was pretty much your job. Now, are you a regimented guy? Is that what, I mean, going in? Were you a regimented guy? Where I, you were always used to a schedule? Or was that something as most guys going in at seventeen, eighteen years old, right. you had to adjust? Uh, I'm, I, it really was an adjustment for me. I mean, because that, that's what I wanted to do. It was somewhat of a, an adjustment, but, um, it, you know, it, if that's what you want to do, then you, you, you just focus in and you do that. Okay. So it was more of a, uh, I'm committed to this, so I have no problem. Right. As opposed to, oh man, the alarm's going off. I, I what am I getting myself into? Right, right, right. Like through high school, was it similar or was high school a lot? Was, was there was there a great difference between the amount of commitment in high school than there would be in college or was it... Uh, no, it, it made me... I think you have to be even more committed in high school 
No, I'm sorry. I think you have to be more, even more committed in high school than than in college to a certain extent because yeah, to a certain extent because because in the, um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna interrupt you, but mm-hmm. more of a uh, um, a um, a self discipline. Self discipline. Okay. Yeah, it's more self discipline. So whereas college, you are told where to be, when to be, and everybody's moving you around. And you just gotta you just gotta right, keep right, up. Right, 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 right. Self discipline in high school. Okay. So, mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's, so you. you you have to commit yourself to yeah. We have set practices, but beyond that, in order to get to where I want to be, I gotta put forth this extra effort on my own time, and or put in the time in the weight room on my own time. Because if there's anybody you know got me on a hey, you be here at this time and show up on schedule. Mm-hmm. Okay. Whereas mm-hmm. college, it's more of a, I don't say hold your hand, but they you know hey, you got to set schedule. You know where to be and when to be there. Right, right, right. And they're gonna there is really little extra time to do any extra work because it's all being done at this pace at this time. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can take a few extra shots or something at the free throw line after everybody shuts down, you know, work on this or that, but for the most part, everybody's here at this time and you're told where to be. Right. I got you, okay, you don't even consider that. Is it, is the, uh, how is the travel done? Is it, uh, you guys do a lot, was a lot of flying, a lot of bus trips, what? Uh, the, yeah, the traveling, it, it's, mo- it's, it's mostly flying. You're, you're, you're flying, uh, for the most part, depending on where we're going, but, uh, Bus trips, Seton Hall, maybe anything close. I don't even. I don't, I don't even think Syracuse. I think we was that a flight? Yeah, probably a flight. And I don't think I went to Syracuse. So. Okay. Yeah, but any anything I say, an hour to three hours, probably a bus ride. But anything after that, we're fine. And now with your eligibility, uh, I guess restrictions. Were you able to travel to certain? To every place they went, or you said you didn't go to Syracuse. Were there certain places that you weren't um, weren't traveling to for what you know? For yeah, restrictions? exactly. You know, my eligibility wouldn't allow me to travel some places. Okay, mm-hmm. all right. I guess it, uh, with I mean, f- any place you had to fly to, or that didn't necessarily come into play. Uh, I don't remember. Okay, I don't remember as far as where. Well, uh, Coach told you where to be and when to be there. And pretty much. Did you deal? You said you played under um, Dunlap, mm-hmm. not necessarily under Lavin because of the health issues. Did you have a lot of you know a lot of one on one with Dunlap, or was a lot of assistant coaches involved in doing? He was the main guy. He 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 was the one who he was the one who believed in me. He was hard on me, but he was the one who saw something in me that people didn't see. I would say he saw it deeper and. Yeah. Okay, so you had a lot of that one-on-one. You hear a lot of things about when stuff goes wrong, when there's this uh, uh, investigation into the program and the head coach, hey, you know, I, we got a lot of assistant coaches here. I couldn't be involved in all this, so I didn't know. Do you think there's any truth to that? Or do you think that these head coaches know exactly what's going on? Because I mean, Or is it is it really just you have a bunch of assistant coaches doing their own thing and ultimately the, the head coach is responsible for putting the – the guys in place to play, but as far as the other stuff, the the uh, off campus stuff, or the you know the the workouts and this this and uh, you know are is that predominantly left up to assistant coaches or are the head coaches really that hands on where they they have to be aware of what's going on? Uh, to a certain extent, because like because at this at the same time, with they're still their own person, so you know. Doing doing their own thing comes into play, um, so the head coach can only be over, can only oversee people to a certain extent. Okay, so you know, you think there is a lot, but there's a lot of assistant coaches. Are there a lot of assistant coaches, or is there really just a handful that are in control of the real important aspects of the team in the uh, game? Uh, a lot of assistant coaches, but a lot. It's, it's there, but. Only, but well, only a select few that really, you know, are in are in touch with the head coach. Okay, so it, there is a chance that you have the one rogue assistant coach out there doing the inappropriate stuff with guys, and this is, the head coach may not be aware if that guy's not coming back and telling them. Right. And the players, if they're getting taken care of and not coming back and saying anything because they don't want to mess up what they got, there's possible the head coach would be oblivious to something that might be going on over here, outside of the X's and O's and the actual play. That's correct. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Did you ever get involved in that? You were seeing, I mean, yeah, you said you kind of alluded to it earlier that there's some, yeah, you believe some, there's some shady stuff going on in there. For sure, yeah, yeah. You ever get caught up in any of that stuff where you were concerned about getting in trouble with any of that? Or mm-hmm. you, you saw guys involved in it, though? Uh, I'm pretty sure guys got involved, but I, w- I never did. I mean, was, it, was it big stuff? Was it uh, Cadillacs and Mercedes Benzes, or was it getting that meal here and there? Because I, I know that that's technically the same rule that's getting violated, but come on, you know. Get yeah, meal. yeah, I mean... I, I I really don't know because I I I wasn't presented with that 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 plan. Okay, gotcha. so I I can tell you. Gotcha. Yeah, but you know it. You know it does go on. It had, you, I mean, oh yeah, right. it, it happens. It happens. Yeah. Like you said, there's no time to you guys to hold a job or to make their own income. So I mean, if you want the extras, unfortunately, this is you know. You, look, are you well? Brings me another point. Are you in favor or opposed to paying college athletes? I'm in favor. In favor of okay. Yeah, I, I agree. I think there's some something to that beyond the scholarship, beyond the you know, because there is you are left with no other time to get the odd job to pay for the the occasional meal outside of you know, or do this, do they go to the movies or whatever it is. So I mean, like you said, from the time you get up in the morning to the time you go to bed at night, it's basketball and classes. You know, where's that? If my if families and funding individual players with money and guys don't come from means like that all the time they're, where are they going to get that money from they can't make it on their own because there's no time to do it right. because of their commitment so there should be a little bit of a, a, a something there where they get a stipend of some kind right, right, right. so they can, they can do those it doesn't have to be a, an exorbitant amount but you know, obviously college basketball college sports isn't hurting with right. the money they're making yeah, the hard part is I think the logistics like how do you make it fair for the small school when you've got schools with money that could potentially pay their athletes a hundred thousand dollars a year piece, mm-hmm. whereas you get this little small school that there's no way they could do that, they'll never get the caliber, and you end up with the Yankees. I you know, <laughs> that's uh, that's what you end up with. Yeah, you, know, you, you don't win it every year. So there's something <laughs> to that. It's, it's, it's about players. Yeah, not like, every year. Okay. That <laughs> right. who's the best guy you played with? Uh, best guy I played with. I mean, high school, college, anywhere. I mean, if, if, if you play with a guy in high school, it's better anybody you play with college. And, you know, where's he at now? Who's, you know, who's the best guy you ever played with? Or against, even. Best guy I played with was, uh, probably say, Michael Frazier. Um, okay. I played with him at uh, Plant High School. Okay. He's in Europe now. All right. He was the best guy I played with. I don't, I don't know... It, it just, it just, it, he uh, was a Gator, um, went to UF, and he's overseas now. He had an opportunity to play with the Lakers. I didn't make the final roster. Mm-hmm. So, um, what position was he? He was shooting guard. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the best guy I ever played against. Was probably Brandon Knight. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Was that at, at college? In high school. In high school? Yeah, I okay. played against him in high school. He was just a lot faster, a lot bigger than everyone at the time. Okay, yeah. all right. And uh, you still keep in touch with him? Uh, what did you ever keep in touch with Brandon? Like, he the opposing no, he was an opposing team. Yeah, but you yeah, really got in a relationship with him? No, no, no. Okay. Um, but um, I have a... What about Frazier, Michael Frazier? Still uh, keep in touch with him? No, but um, I saw him a while ago. Don't keep in touch with him, but I, I'm sure if I see him, it'll be... You know each other now, but I mean, he's not somebody that's going to help you get a leg up anywhere else because he's uh, involved in that European league. And he's not somebody you can reach out to and say, "Hey, you know, I'm thinking about coming over. I'm doing this." Uh, is he a contact that might benefit you? He may be. Oh, okay. All right. So that, that's a relationship that is there if and when you might need it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. And you're uh, you're a point guard, right? So that was uh, what kind of what kind of offense did uh, was the St. John's run? What was that? What was that? Uh, at the time, we run, we ran motion. Okay. Motion. Mm-hmm. All right. So yeah. I mean, you were involved with that a lot. You were involved in the, moving the ball around more than than anything else. Is 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 quarterback in the the beginning of uh, of the plays of the the scoring. Oh, yes. See, you're out of loop on phones, and I am like you guys are way. over That's why we're not talking phones. Way man. over here, no, man. No, I was embarrassed when you guys were talking phones. I have no phone idea phone. when it, positions and plays in basketball. I have no clue. I'd be better. And it's sad because it makes it hard for I, Sorry, I. I can't enjoy watching it because I don't understand what's going on. Just yeah. a bunch of people running around. To me. Well, you're much more intelligent than me, and he probably is too. So <laughs> yeah, you know, you guys want to get back to something, you know. But, 
philosophy or something. <laughs> talk that, by the way, well, dumb jock stuff is all I can bring to the table. <laughs> yeah, phones, cool. yeah, you want to talk phones? Are you big into phones and gadgets? I'm sorry, I don't want to leave you out of the conversation. <laughs> no, I'm talk pizza. I like pizza. I like pizza. Right. How was that? Is it good? It was awesome. Yeah, yeah that's what we said. Where did it come from? Uh, I think Eddie and Sam's. Oh, really? Right down here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It looked good, but as I explained to him, I, I got to avoid the gluten. Yeah, you, yeah, no, yeah. I, I'm, I, I probably should too, but I don't. <laughs> you, you, uh, have you grew up. You didn't grow up in town and country, though, or did you? Is that where you got? Is that your family has been? Is that a house that's been there for? You guys been in that house for a long time? Yeah, I've been in the house for a long time. Okay, so Can you I see what time it is. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, six forty. Okay. Yeah. How, how much longer will I be? Let me find out. I'm waiting on the phone. If you don't, yeah, no, when, hey, okay. we're, as long as you want to be here, and when you're ready to go, I say that we're just waiting on the phone. If you don't mind waiting until that's done, otherwise, then, you know, whatever you want to get out of here, man, that's okay. your call. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's been a while since I've, I've done it, but same day flights? Uh -huh. They You can buy a ticket and get on the plane? Well, I was hoping I could, I could buy it earlier, like earlier today, because right. this whole thing happened. Sure. But hopefully I can still get it. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, for some reason, I was thinking it was a there was a twenty four hour twenty four hour rule. Right. Where, but I think what it is, is you have to have you have to have just whatever card you buy it with and stuff like that in hand if you're going to fly within twenty four hours. Okay. But yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if there's some limit. Like you can't buy a ticket for you know, like I said, six forty. Whether or not you can buy a ticket for seven o'clock. Okay. Right now, I, I have no idea. Okay. I'm doing the flying. Did you fly down here from New York? From up there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you leave your car down here, or did you? Yeah, I leave, leave it. Yeah, I leave it here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, I'm more of a car guy than a basketball guy. Like I said, yeah. football was my sport, but but no, I'm my brother actually had a uh, Mustang Cobra similar to Cobra? the one you've got. Right. Yeah, similar year. I, I want to say it was a '96. Okay. If I remember correctly, yeah, he had that car back in the day. That was a cool car. It, it was a convertible too. And he got the Cobra on the on the on the, on the, uh, on the bumper, the emblem. yeah, on the em emblem, and then on the bumper instead of saying Mustang, it said Cobra. Right. It was a it was a nice car. Yeah, but it, I think it was uh, I want to say it was a four point six. It was after they had switched from the the old five point motor that everybody liked mm -hmm. to the smaller four point six that was supposed to be. Supposed to be better, but nobody liked it. Basically, right. you know, same car that we actually have in, in our Crown Vicks, or same motor. I mean, that we have in our Crown Vicks. Right, right, right. Just a little, little bit different, but yeah. basically the same. But it was a cool car. And he's got a couple. He's he's had a couple of classic Mustangs over the years. And cool. My brother. Oh, your brother. Uh, he had a he had a seventy one Mach one. Uh -huh. That had a three fifty one Cobra jet and a manual transmission. So the the motor was worth more than the whole car. Right. It was so rare, and then he wrecked that one. And uh, the most recent one, he's had it for years, but he, he still got his '69 Mach One mm -hmm. with the little scoops on the side. You know, it looks like air intake. I don't think it's really functional; it doesn't really do anything. Right, right. But it is by far my favorite Mustang. Right. It is just such a cool looking car. And actually, uh, I don't know if you ever saw uh, what's the Keanu Reeves going to sixty seconds. No, oh, but not, um, uh, John Wick. John Wick. You know the Mustang in John Wick? Uh, I don't. Okay, so the the car that he's trying to get back is the first 69. One the well, you, you really don't see the car in the first one because they steal it from him, right? You know, the beginning when he's driving it, uh -huh. they steal it from him. Okay. And in the second one, you see a lot more of it because uh, he goes to steal it back. So uh, that's a 69 Mach 1. Okay. And, man, Sweet. just a badass car. Sweet. Sweet. Yeah. I like the uh, the Shelby. Okay. The Shelby has yeah, absolutely. Seen it with, uh, with uh, ah, what's the actor? Have you seen Nicholas Cage? Yeah, Nicholas Cage. absolutely. Eleanor. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. 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 What a movie. Yeah. What a movie. Great that, cars. Yeah. That show. I mean, all those cars. Right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that's classic for sure. Right. For sure. But yeah, Shelby's now. I mean. You better be ready to spend six figures if you want a Shelby Mustang, right. Right. a real Shelby Mustang. A real one. You know, right? It's, they're right. unbelievably expensive. Yeah. Yeah. I, every year I try to go. There's a car show over in, in Polk County, over in Lakeland, that I like to go to. I try to go every year, and they have one of their big things is they get just tons and tons of Mustang clubs to show up. Mm -hmm. So you got Mustangs from from modern all the way back to 
you know, the uh, the originals, and they have a bunch of Shelby Cobras, you right. know, the old Cobra. I mean, and again, a lot of those are kit cars. They're not real ones because the real ones are half a million dollars. Right, 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 right. But they're still cool looking, you know. And the ones that are done well, yeah. And, um, and it's real. It's not plastic. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, you know, the originals, I don't know if they were aluminum or if they were fiberglass, like the uh, Corvette bodies. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there's some companies that are making reproductions that are, you know, they're still awesome, even though they're not, even though they're not the real thing. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I'm a, big, I'm a big Mustang fan. I, I would have to say that over Did the you years... Mustang before anything? I don't know about before anything. Okay. Because um, I, being a car guy, but also having a family... The Mustang's a little tough for me because okay. it's a two door, right? right? So what I drive, I, I have a turbocharged Subaru. Oh, so Subaru, yeah. So the all wheel drive with the turbo, manual transmission, that for me is where it's at because I got to have four doors. You right, know, right, I got to, right. you know, I got kids and everything. So right, right. It's, for me, it's uh, that's where it's at as far as a performance car that I can live with. Uh-huh. But if if I were looking at a, a brand new, you know, the pony cars, I, I think right now. The Mustang, I would put above the Camaro and the Challenger. I just think it's a better looking car. Yeah. The, yeah. the newest it, one that just really, came out. It really is. Yeah. Every year, I think it's the best looking car. It's Ford. So. Yeah. yeah. And I, I do think Ford makes a good car. As far as domestics, exactly. I've, I've owned a lot of Toyotas. I had a Supra back in the day. Mm-hmm. I had a 1990 Toyota Supra. Right. That was a cool car. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. was way ahead of its time. Right. I, and I had it, gosh, I had it in the. Early 2000s, I owned that car. So when I had it, it was 14, 15 years old. Um, yeah, I think I had it all the way up to 2006, somewhere like that, 2005, 2006. So it was 15 or 16 years old, and it had technology that you just can't believe from 1990. Mm-hmm. You know, the adjustable suspension, push button, adjustable suspension. You just couldn't get that in a car right. that, back then. You know that was cutting edge stuff. Right. But that that was a fun car to drive, and it was a. Unfortunately, the only problem is it wasn't the turbo. It was a normally aspirated, but it was still, you know, powerful, fun to drive, rear wheel drive, mm-hmm. and it had the uh, target top. Okay. The whole top would come off, okay. and you just store it in the back. Okay. You know, had a little hatchback, uh-huh. and just had a little clips uh-huh. fit right in. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It was like having a convertible. Right, you know? right. But if it was raining or whatever, it was nice to have a good hard top that, because you'd put it down and you screw it in uh-huh. to tighten it, so it would tighten down into the seals, and it was just like having a hard top. Mm-hmm. So that was a, that was a cool car. Yeah, before it was its time. Yeah, yeah, way way before its time. I mean, the thing was. And they were, I mean, expensive back in the day. Mm-hmm. For you know, in 1990, if you were br- buying a brand new one, it was an expensive car. Right. But it w- just came loaded with stuff that right. that you couldn't get, you know, in in a lot of other cars. But then that was the the generation before the last one, which was uh, not gone in 60 seconds. What's the other? The one where they made like 20 sequels. Fast and Furious. Fast and Furious. Uh-huh. The Super and Fast and Furious. You know, the, in the first movie was the last super that they made right. and that was the generation just after the one I had. Right, right. So still a cool car. But now if you got one that was like a ninety five or a ninety six, mm-hmm. I mean, those cars are worth a ton of money today. Ton of money. If they're in good shape. Because right. they're they're like timeless. They still look futuristic. Right. You know? One of those rare and I read the same thing about the old uh uh, RX-7s, the last generation of RX-7 before they discontinued them, that's supposed to be the next classic. Okay. Right? Because it's still a cool looking car. Mm-hmm. You know, before the RX-8 ever came out, that, that very last RX-7 um, is supposed to be, like, if you can get a hold of one, that's going to be the one that really goes up in value, just like the Supra. Right. But, you know, you pull up pictures and you can see why. And it's it's it now. They're first vision test on it, so. Okay. Cool. See, it wasn't that long. Um, hey, you can... Take a look at the video for me, if you don't mind. We've asked everybody else. We're gonna, well, might as well ask you. I know you said you've never been up in that uh, particular area, 15th in Nebraska, mm-hmm. or 15th in Hillsborough, Nebraska, and Osborne. None of that area is familiar to you at all. Any idea where the area I'm talking about? Well, I mean, I know how to get around, but... Uh, but, I mean, you don't have any reason to be up there. I know you said that really. Can, can I show you a video anyway? Just humor me on this. Have you seen the video? You see you don't watch the news, so maybe it's the first time you get a glimpse of this. So... Can you pull it up? Yeah, please. Yeah. Meanwhile, I think you'd be. I don't want to move your stuff here. Right now. Get there. I'll tell you what here. Access. Let me get the internet access to you. Yeah, 
I gotta get through all my Springfield XD YouTube videos, do my research. How do you like using that? This thing? Yeah. Uh, it's hit or miss. Uh, you know what? You can navigate through it. Tell me if, um, there. You want to try to look at the flights? I'll go through them as best you can. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully the connection is good in here. I'm not much of a traveler, so as far as looking at uh, the website, like, no, oh, not the edge. Alright. This is get up whenever you're ready. Oh, here, just pause just for that. Let's search for a second. Just look at this. Tell me what you think. This is released to the media not that long ago. This is really people were talking about the uh, the serial murder stuff, that kind of stuff. This mm -hmm. is released in group. Yeah. I know you work at McDonald's. Anybody that is familiar, you come, you know, coming in McDonald's or anyway, does that look familiar at all to you? Like anybody that you come across in your travels? Uh, no. And that area I was asking me about earlier, I was kind of up into where that is, so that's why I was, uh, it's, a, it's a long shot, but I figured we showed everybody else and their mother one of those show, and the people at McDonald's were talking about, this is what they're probably referencing. <laughs> but that doesn't look like anybody that you're aware of. Except to, uh, I can't even tell who it is. Yeah, it's difficult. I'm talking about just his general demeanor, just the way he carries himself, maybe clothing, anything like that, it looks like, uh, Anyway, it's coming to McDonald's down there because I mean, it's you know, Tampa's not a big city. Right. But, okay. but not doesn't doesn't really anybody to you. No. Thanks, man. I appreciate you taking a look at that. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, that free ring. What was the talk about that? I mean, would they uh, talk about the serial killer? What was the, uh, did they say, anybody say they had any idea who they, who they were talking about? Who it was? They say they, they didn't know. They, I, I, I mean, they mentioned it a couple times, but they just said they didn't know. That's weird. Anybody say that, uh, they're from the area or live in the neighborhood where this guy, they think this guy might be doing his crimes? Anybody seem particularly fearful that like they afraid to go home or afraid to leave their house at night? Not, not from what I, not from what I um, inspected or not from what I, what not from what I saw. No one's ever, you know. Are you, are you close to anybody in particular besides uh, Ms. Walker? At the job? Yeah, that confides in you or talk, yeah, at the job or, you know. No. No, I just. No, that it says, hey, look, you know, this is, they share with you maybe their concerns about all that's going on out there? Uh. You want to take really, No. Are you close to anybody at work or is it just kind of like. This is just a work thing. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any luck? Is connection all right? Oh, uh, so please air below. We can only accept that occur. Not sure. That's not working. Oh, okay. So no problem with the connection. It's just more of the search itself. Oh. Right. I mean, is that what, or is there something to come up? We don't accept dates that occur between. Oh, so maybe you can't search on that. For, oh, for Expedia, maybe the day of. It's it's too late for Expedia to accept any. Who is it? I don't. I don't. Know. I, I don't. I fly Southwest whenever I fly, so I go to Southwest.com. I started looking for flights. That's the only I mean, that's the way we travel. I've Southwest. Never, yeah, Southwest. I've never used a uh, 
third party site to look. So I'm not familiar with how how they do the parameters set. So was it Expedia, Orbitz, and those kind of places? Okay. You can check. I mean, you know, each one may be different. Something maybe earlier tomorrow morning, so you can get in there and go right to campus. I'm supposed to get in late tonight. Is it speedy? Like you start starting tomorrow, maybe they got to think something first thing in the morning. So, what else are you doing in your spare time? Besides so that's basketball. You, you have any hobbies or anything new? No, I just um, fish or hunt or anything like that. Uh, None of those, to be honest. Outdoors guy at all? A little bit, yeah. No snakes fishing, though. All that stuff, you need to... Huh? Snakes and... Snakes and pigs. A little bit, I'm yeah. I'm trying to find a common place for you two to talk. Yeah, I feel like I've been we out like... We were talking cars session. while you were out of the room. Oh, cars, okay. Yeah, cars, <laughs> right. Well, yeah, me, uh, Excuse me for... Uh, can, can anybody have cars, you know, four wheels and... You know, right, it goes from this way to that way. He does not appreciate a nice car. No, no, no. He doesn't get it. That's okay. I don't get basketball. Hey, you know, we, we can't be perfect. You have any luck? A little bit. Um, they got to figure you got your choice of airlines when you're looking to go to New York. Right, right. He he definitely got to be. Um, get lucky with some of these prices, so. What's your airline of choice? I like JetBlue. Yeah, I like JetBlue. I think that's what we flew when I went to Manhattan. Yeah, it was like what dirt cheap, right? Right, right, right. Like stupid cheap, like sixty nine bucks or something to fly. Really? Yeah, and I mean that was like I think when they were first. This was seven years ago, so it was when I think okay, they were okay. first trying to make a name for themselves. But right, right. Yeah, it was it was dirt cheap. I think we had to fly out of Orlando. Okay. But yeah, but that's not idea. Right. right. To get that kind of rate. The 69 bucks. Yeah. What are the prices looking like now? 150. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. I figured it would be real pricey trying to fly. Because usually if you buy the ticket two months in advance, you know, mm -hmm. you can get cheap rates. But day of or trying to buy the day before, they, uh, they gouge you a little bit. What happened? Right I think I'm just do this one. I can't find anything earlier. I want to get there earlier. Did you find one tomorrow or did you find one for tonight? I wanted to find one for tonight, but it looks like I'll find one for tomorrow. Gotcha. Now, if you can fly Delta for like 170 you know, it might be worth the extra 20 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to just this one. Did you get your card loaded? My card? Yeah. The yeah. one is the one you went to go yeah, take but care of? I, I don't I don't have that on me here. It's not is it supposed to be in your wallet? Yeah. Or was no, it in your no, pocket? It was in my pocket. Okay. We'll yeah. make sure you get it. Okay. Thank you. Did you find anything? Yeah. Any of his other property, um, I guess his, his Amscot card was in his pocket instead of his wallet? Yeah, we'll, we'll check. Yeah, you, that was, yeah, I wasn't involved in that, so I'm just explaining to you what the officers took from you at the time that they were uh, doing the initial detention and everything. What, what, uh, your, your wallet, your phone, we already know about. There's an Amscot card missing. Mm -hmm. okay. Anything else? No. Okay, no jewelry or anything? No. Okay. 
Je vais venir essayer de suivre. No, never seen him come into McDonald's or never seen him out and about uh, in town of country at all before? Or? No. Okay. Any other neighbors you frequent in Tampa? Any other neighbors I'm frequent with? Neighborhoods besides town and country and Ybor City because of work? Any other neighbors that you frequent in Tampa that uh, you have friends or you know girlfriends or anybody? Uh, no. No? Okay, so town and country to Ybor City and back. Pretty much. Okay. Uh, you don't recognize any of these people? No. You know, that's a better picture of the first three. Anthony Naboa, Monica Hoffa, Benjamin Mitchell. Any of those names mean anything to you? Mm. Okay. And this is Ronald Feldman right here. No friend of the fan. None of those names. Uh, I think he played high school sports, but I think it was football. No? I don't know. Okay, no. The people I'm showing you were the three. The serial murders that your friends or co workers were talking about, these were the ones that were killed. So that's, yeah, but none of them ever crossed your path mm -hmm. at work or anything like that. I'm sorry, man. What'd you find? What'd you got? Um, Something tonight or no, tomorrow? Tomorrow. I think I'm going to do this one. That's this Saturday, though. That's this weekend. Oh, wow. Well, that's Wednesday right there. That's. Yeah, that's 2 10, though. Yeah. I was just, just wanted to point that out to you before you <laughs> just know that's going to be Saturday. We find out about your car, huh? You should be able to filter it by date, right? Yeah. Which I did, so. Let's see tomorrow. I blame the computer, but I've never used that one, so. It's a nice tablet. Yeah? Internet connection? Yeah. yeah. Just give him a minute, my Sometimes it fades in and out. I don't know if he's got that right now on Wi Fi or if he's got it on a cellular connection, but when he gets back, I can see what he's working with. Sometimes it's a little spotty. So you got an iPhone, are you more of an Apple user than a... Absolutely. Yeah? Yeah. So I think Android has got the edge on some stuff. Sorry. Yeah. This, tell me, if this is something I think I found this part. Is this all your stuff? Yes, sir. A couple dollars there? Is this the Amsterdam car you're talking about? Yes. Cool. I don't know if you want this stuff, but it's all, it's, it's all yours. Uh, I was told the detectives found another uh, Apple phone in your car. I'm going to search for it. Is that... Does that belong to you? It does. All right. Do you? Can we download that one as well? Well, that that one's old. That I haven't used that one in literally like two years. Okay. So well, and the question still stands. Can we can we download it or would you object? I'd rather not. Don't. No. Yeah. Okay. Do you use right. that as an iPod or something? Like, is yeah, like yeah. is that what it's for yeah, for music it or? Yeah. It's it's not. I don't even use that phone. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. I, I just got word that came across it, so I wanted to ask before, like I said, take advantage of this. We don't have to bother you at any other time. Come, hey, we want to do this, we want to do that. Okay. All right. So even though he's an Apple user, he says that you've got a nice tablet. It's complimentary. It's not mine. It's, it's for the department. Otherwise, I, yeah. No, I, trust me. My wife w would not let me buy anything that's not Apple. Yeah. This is the reason I carry. The reason I carry apples is because my wife wants me to carry apple. Right. I don't have a choice either way. He keeps telling me that uh, Galaxy or whatever. It looks cool. I see people able to write on stuff like that. I said, well, "Honey, why can't we have that?" Right. <laughs> well, because it's not compatible with anything else we have in the house. It's because you bought Apple. Why can't you know? No. 
Well, well, well. So if you're thinking about getting married, know that these are the things you need to consider as well. Uh -huh. Is that a lot of decisions that you make won't necessarily be your own decisions. They'll uh -huh. be decisions your wife will make on your behalf. Just keep that in mind. <laughs> okay. You're in an involved relationship. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. uh, you're, you're, you're using, you like Apple. Yeah. You're, you, you use Apple. Yeah. Right. I don't know any better. But Android, Android, Android's got the edge on some things. It's got the edge of cool Google, stuff. Google Maps. You use Google Maps even though I like Google Maps. Do you like Google Maps? Do you use it? Yeah. Okay. Right. So I think for sure, hands down, Google Maps is better than anything Apple does. As far as as far as navigation, mapping, things like that. And then a lot of the stuff that you can get on Apple phone now, you can get on Android for the last two years. Right. Right? So I think that there's some things that Apple does well, you know, user friendly. Mm -hmm. You can get on any Apple phone and fumble your way through it. Android, if you get in there, you can you can you can mess some stuff up. Can you? Know, you? you okay, know. yeah. Then I shouldn't. You can change all kinds of then, settings. Then that right there, you know what? You convinced me. There's no reason why I should. No, have an Android you should phone. not have. An Android. Android. I've never suggested that you get one. I just said no. that they're better. Like smarter people should get one. Right, right. Okay. So, but you can change the keyboard on this. You don't like your keyboard? Get a different keyboard. Whatever. Yeah. Right? Like, okay, cool. This so this is simple. Got it. I can send simple text is good. To my wife and kids. I can take pictures. Beyond that, I, uh, before I met my wife, I used a flip phone. Right. And she said, well, we'll take this and that. You can have my old Apple, honey, because I want to upgrade. Oh, right. cool. Wow, this is neat. I can look at sports scores. I can check out the Phillies updates and all that stuff. So that was, I was in heaven. Right. So since then, it's like... And well, obviously she's that was like 2010. Yeah, she's gotten updates, and I never... I don't mean, you know, I, I, it still works occasionally. Right, right. right. But so... It's yeah. what happens when you answer your voice phone. Yeah. Well, yeah. If you, if you ever call me, because I'll leave you my number and stuff, because you, if you're going to give me a shout-out, uh -huh. and I don't answer the phone right away, you leave me a message. Just know that I may not be able to call you back in about 30 minutes because listen to my voicemail. It shuts you guys out for real. It, well, it shuts down my phone for about 30 minutes. So <laughs> I'll be able to send you a text, I think. Mm -hmm. But don't be offended if I don't get back to you right away. If I, if, better send me a text, a shout out. Say, hey, can you answer your phone now? Because if you call, leave me a voicemail, I'm not going to be able to call you back. And I hate to miss the opportunity where you're standing, like, you know, center court, some big event. And hey, Kenny, can you listen to this? I made it. Kenneth or Kenny? Kenny. I, I prefer Kenny. Kenny. Yeah, yeah. Kenneth is my, Austin. Yeah, Austin. Is my yep. given name, but uh, Kenny is what I go by. Right. All okay. right. Yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, keep that in mind because when you make it big, no matter how long it takes, I'll probably still have this phone. <laughs> right. If for no other reason to prove to him, ha ha, you keep upgrading every year, paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars, I made this last. Right, right. Do so you guys joke about that often? <laughs> <laughs> they pick on me. Can you tell it's an ongoing thing? Let's just know this, man. When you got the full package going here, right? right they got to pick something. Yeah. So they pick on this. Right. Uh -huh. That's it. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Right. He raises pigs and goats. We make fun of that. A goat, um, pig farmer, right? right? But he's 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 a lot smarter than me. So I, you know, and, and he points it out every chance he gets. Every time. Right. And you're you're a lot smarter than me too. So I'm sure you, if you guys get to know each other for long enough, you both be picking on me about my lack of uh, technological <laughs> ability. Yeah. You know, we're off, we're off topic. It's not about me, man. You find is that on Wi-Fi or is that on? I, I, I'm just going to do it once I reach, re, once I get home. Okay. Yeah, you know, I think I'm just going to do it once I get home. Okay. okay. All right. Is this on Wi-Fi? I don't know. Oh, you I was asking because he said it was it was getting it was freezing, so I didn't know if it was on Wi-Fi or if it was on cellular data. You're, asking, you're asking him, I'm asking right? The wrong person. I'm asking the. Yeah. Is it on Wi-Fi or cellular data? Uh, <laughs> this may be on. Sure. This is a this is a Microsoft tablet. So, is that what it is? Okay. I'm not sure. It may be on Wi-Fi though. Maybe on Wi-Fi also. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. You want me to package that up to go? Yes, sir. You know, I, I, mean, I want you to know, give me a nice tip at the end of this. <laughs> Jeez. I wish I could. <laughs> Look, he doesn't get tipped in dollars, right? All right. I did. <laughs> I did I really wish I could. That shout out's going to be big. <laughs> All right, hopefully. So, the European League, see, I would have thought the opposite. I would have thought the European League was the way to go, and that, like, the minor leagues, the what, G League now? Uh -huh. I, that, that was more of a dead end than the European, but it makes a lot of sense. You get out there, away from everybody, you're out of sight, out of mind, you know, not as many people maybe putting eyes on you. Right. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I went to a G League game in Lakeland, the, the Magic game. That was a, that was a cool was experience. How it was, was cool. It? Yeah, it was, it was, it was a, a professional sporting event that was just shrunken down to the size of the venue. Right. Right? So it was, uh, 
you know, it was family friendly and all that stuff, and that yeah, was a good, uh, it was a good event. My kids loved it, had a good time. Where so. that's all that matters. Yeah. How was the competition? It was pretty good. I mean, again, I'm a, you know, I'm not much of a basketball guy, mm -hmm. but uh, no, I mean, they, it was a high scoring game. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't expecting, you know, I don't know what I was expecting. I don't know if I was expecting like a, you know, high school school or something, but it was, you know, the, the final score was whatever 106 to 103 or something i mean it was well, a right. decent scoring game so there was a lot of action okay. and uh you know the halftime show kind of sucked but other than that it was, well, it was a lot of fun so let me see i think it'll work now if it's still frozen i can take a look at it and see if i can determine what it's if it's uh, again on cellular or Wi-Fi, I, I would have to imagine the Wi-Fi has got to be a better option in this room, right. just because we're in the center of the building. But yeah, it looks like Wi-Fi might be down right now. Oh, is it? I think so. Still frozen? Not frozen. Just uh, slow. Yeah. What airline? Uh, it looked like American. I, I, I had one for yesterday, but now it's saying a different day. Yeah, I definitely have no Wi Fi signal in here. So are you planning on crashing back at your parents' house tonight? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. You think they're going to be aware of what has gone on? No, no, no. no. Do you? I, I'm just, you know, what, whatever it was that caused you to, you know, leave for for a night or two. Uh -huh. Do you think everything's kind of smoothed over, or what do you think? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Are they? Because I mean, obviously, as a parent, I'm looking at it thinking, well, even if I'm mad. If I know he's about to fly up to New York and be gone again, I want him home. You know, I want him to, you know, whatever you're mad about, you're gonna get over. You know, so just kind of looking at that from that perspective, I would imagine that you'd probably be welcome, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, I don't know. I, mean, I can't put myself in their in their shoes, but I would think that if your intention is to go back up there potentially for a couple of years for a master's program, that you're gonna be welcome to stay in the house. You know, it's the night before we leave, right? Right. I got a thing. Oh, so. There wasn't any other big issue that they were upset about, right? Just the rules of the house? Type yeah, of thing? Not, nothing too big. Just, just a mis miscommunication, mm -hmm. you know? No, nothing too big. Just miscommunication. And like you said, another adult living in another adult's yep. house. It's That's tough. It's a, it's tough. I remember after I graduated, I moved back to my parents' house for a short time, mm -hmm. and uh, that was not a good situation. I had four years of freedom, right? Mm -hmm. You know, living essentially on my own, and now I'm moving back to their house, their rules, their expectations, or whatever. Right. Um, and meanwhile, you know, doing staying on my own two feet, you right. know. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a tough position to be in. You know, you don't want to be the kid or the parent in that situation. Because right. one day you might find yourself in that position where you've got your own kid that's moved back home that you've got some expectations for them. Right. You've got some rules. You, you want to know, you know, that, you're, that they're going to be home. If they're gone all night, you're going to worry about them, even if they're 25, right? right? They're gone overnight, and you don't hear from them, you're going to worry. So what do you do? you got to be home by this time, right. so I know you're home. How does that feel to the 25 year old? Right, right, right. That you gotta be home at 11 p.m. or whatever it is. Right. So, so how, how does that stuff work? Because there were so many people out there today, and it was cameras out there. Right. I, I don't, like I said, I really don't watch the news much. 
So is my face going to be all over the news? I, I have no control over what they broadcast, and I don't even know what they what they captured. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously, you know, there there are people that are that are hyped up and worked up about the stuff that's going on, and the, you know, the cases that we're working, and people jump to conclusions, things like that. It's our job to go through the methodical process of all the things that we've asked you that you've been totally cooperative in providing us yeah. is is what we do because we we can't jump to conclusions you know we we have to go by the facts by the book we can't get emotional about and you know people get emotional about cases that are ongoing like the, the case that we've been you know, talking about that your coworkers have been talking about people get worked up about it you know it's it's scary if you you know if you live in that area um, you know, a lot of people, even that don't live in the area, are, are scared. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of hype. And Detective Knightley and I, we cannot afford to get wrapped up mm-hmm. or swept up in hype. Mm-hmm. So that's why I talk to you directly, one on one. Hey, this is this is what's going on. This is what we'd like to do. Are you willing to do it? Great, fantastic. Yeah. Um, you know, you've been more than willing to accommodate us and help. You know prevent us from getting overly concerned right. about something that other people are getting concerned about because again they're jumping to conclusions and we need to go about a different route what are the facts that we have in hand what can you help us determine okay people are worked up because there's a gun in play right mm-hmm. we've been doing this for a long time okay obviously as a, as a police officer I, I have some level of concern when I find out that there's a gun in play but I've been doing it long enough to know. Sorry, that took me a lot of five four. <laughs> took, it, we've been doing it long enough to know that a gun in play does not necessarily mean that there's some crazy, you know, plot. It's there are lots of legal gun owners in Florida. We talked about that. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're 21 or older and you're not a felon, it is not automatically illegal for you to to have a gun. Right? Lots of people do. When I was 21, you better believe that I owned guns. No question about it. Um, it was all legal. It was all above board. Now I didn't have a concealed weapons permit either, so I couldn't carry it on me. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't conceal it on my body and walk around. Right. But I knew that I could store it in my car. I could drive to the gun range. I could, you know, shoot it there. I could store it in my home. You know, all that stuff was was legal and above board. Right. So we know that just because a gun pops up, that there's no need to panic. There might be a solution. Maybe this guy has a 12-year-old brother that he's worried about that he doesn't want to get a hold of this thing and he's trying to find a responsible person to hold on to it that's not in his household. Perfectly reasonable, right? Mm -hmm. That's why we're going about it this way. Step by step, as opposed to all the the craziness that you saw out there. Um, So the the question was, his face going to be on the news? You know, all the people out there, the cameras... As I explained to them, we have no control over what they broadcast. Hopefully they're responsible, right? Because if the news outlet broadcasts something and portrays it as something that it's not, then that could be a problem for them, right? We have control over only so much of that. Right. Unfortunately, with the police department, we don't get to pick and choose what the media gets to release and what they do to a point. Mm-hmm. And that's that we get, to, we get to choose what we can give them up to a point. Mm-hmm. But there are laws that apply that make us have to turn stuff over to them. Uh, none of which is applies to this situation right now. But now, if somebody snapped your picture before you you left, or when you came out, or, or you know when you try to you leave here tonight, I, I can't do anything about that. Okay. Um, I want to talk to you. But, you know, we got the information back on uh, some of your phone. Okay. Hang on a second. Yeah. Okay. Um, your phone indicates that you, we talked about the area before, mm-hmm. about the 15th and uh, Nebra- or Hillsboro and Nebraska and Hillsboro, that area up there. Mm-hmm. Your phone indicates that you may have been up there in that area on certain nights. Okay. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I, I want to, you know, indulge me with that. Is there reasons why your phone might be, hit, you know, in those areas of that night when, you know, the, you, know you told me that it didn't, didn't necessarily should be? There's no reason for them to be. Um, probably just, I don't know. 
Luca. Yeah, I don't know. Probably just went to a friend's house or. Well, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, said it's stopped it's at a, a gas station. Well, coming f to and from where? It's just like I said. There's. We're he said we're investigating. The city of Tampa is investigating a, a serious matter going on right now. They said you you talked about at work and people at work have mentioned it. Okay, have you ever explored it? Have you ever looked into that stuff? Yeah, looked into the it. serial killer everybody's talking about. Have you looked into what's going on? Are you at least a bit curious as to yeah, what's going on? Yeah, absolutely. All right, have you? But you said you were unfamiliar with what was going on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 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 to a certain extent, I mean, I don't indulge myself into, you know, work trying to worry about that. That's no, I'm not saying worry about, it, but I mean, just out of curiosity, say, yeah, are, you, are, are you familiar at all with what's going on at all? Yeah. And what do you know about what's going on? That there's a serial killer. Do you, okay. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you know where or uh, you know if, who's being targeted? Like you were talking about earlier about certain people being targeted for a certain reason. Mm -hmm. Some of it's uh, you know some of it's sexual in nature. A lot of it can be sexual in nature. Some of it is for their own reasons that they have. Um, you know, which may be you know maybe valid reasons to themselves. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, we like to explore that with the individual that's responsible. Mm -hmm. Um, but with that being said, is are you familiar at all about the, you know, did you look into any of that as to what might be going on and why? Was you really bit curious about that? Yeah, a little curious, but I don't know why. Do you know what neighborhood the the serial killer is operating in? They, they said some lives. Okay. Who, okay. Who, who are they? Yeah. People that were job. Okay. So you heard that much. Okay. I mean, earlier I, you, you seemed to be like, yeah, I, you had no idea what was all. Yeah. Okay. So you have some idea. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you know what area of town that is? Not really. I mean, if somebody says Seminole Heights, hey, hey, come pick me up at Seminole Heights, would you have any idea where to go? Uh, 22nd. 22nd and? Hillsboro. Eh, it's a little further, but okay, that's your guess. Uh -huh. Okay, no, I mean, that's not Seminole Heights, but I mean, that's, you know, cause that's your guess. Yeah. All right, so you're not familiar with that neighborhood whatsoever. No. All right, so when you said you might stop at a gas station or might have a friend in the area, I'm just, you know, is that the Seminole Heights area? Is that the area, or is that? Yeah. I, would you know? I wouldn't know. Okay. I mean, with this friend, I mean, can you think of the friend you might be referring to? That, did that friend say, "Hey, be careful when you come over because there's somebody out here in my neighborhood, you know, doing some crazy things." Yeah. No, not any anybody particular. No friend gave you the warning, and hey, no. be careful coming here after sundown because there's a guy going around killing people. Yeah. No conversation like that at all. Uh, no, no, no warnings from anybody even specific about a specific time or, or area that you can recall. I mean, it's important to us because right now we're reaching for any bit of information we can because we want to be able to find this guy. Uh, he's dead. The people I showed you, decent people. Okay, I mm -hmm. mean, that's a sixty-year-old man that was out feeding the homeless. Mm -hmm. That's an autistic kid. Okay, that that missed his bus. This young woman, 30 years old, was merely walking from her aunt's place, all right, just down the road in, in her neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And this young man right here was, uh, was waiting in a bus to go pick up his girlfriend to make sure she got home safely. Decent people, people like you, all right? All right? That's... Go to work, go to school, yep, doing the right thing. Doing the right thing, like you were brought up to do, like you're doing now. Life, snuffed out. I mean, you know, for obviously the freedom, you know, in the prime. I mean, this young man is younger than you are. These two are. Right? This man right here, I mean, a little older than the rest of them, but he still had a lot to give, a lot of life to live. Right. All right, and, and gone. And so we're, we're very excited about the opportunity to get some answers. Right. All right. And, and we ask anybody and show anybody we can to maybe help us along here. Okay. Um, and anybody that might be might have been in the area where this happened. We, we we don't want to miss the opportunity to ask what you might be able to tell us to help us out. Sure. So if you if you were up in those areas moving around, then did you see something? Did you you know did, did, did in hindsight did, is there any reason why you know um, you know looking at that video earlier maybe you know you didn't think about it but in hindsight you know and now that I have an idea of what they're talking about do you remember seeing anybody like that walking the streets around there? I don't. No. No. Not at all. Okay. All right. Um, is there anything else that you can think of that would point us in the direction? I mean, I know you're, you know, 
kind of out of the loop here, but I mean, where would you go with this? Any idea? Any suggestions? You're a smart guy. We've been sitting here talking. You, you I mean, you, you know, so I think we've established you're smarter than me. What, you know, if you were to point me in a direction, how, how do you how do you find a guy responsible for something like that? Okay. What kind of person am I looking for? I'm not sure. I mean, is it, a, it you know? Would you be capable of doing something like that? No. Do you know I, how, I don't think I would be. Do you know how those people got killed? I don't. So when you talked or heard about the case, or have you looked it up at all um, to see what's going on in that neighborhood? Um, because of the talk at work about a serial killer, have you looked at it to see, because it's been publicized how, you know, how they died. So uh, are you familiar with that? With uh, as we talked about before, some serial killers, they strangle people, some killers, they stab people. Yeah, it's no they, great secret if you indulge yourself at all. You said you did a little bit. Yeah, I, I don't really know. You don't know how they died? No. Okay. I mean, if you don't, you know, I mean, did you read, have you read any articles or news stories on this stuff? Mm -hmm. Or you just go by word of mouth from work? Pretty much word of mouth. You haven't uh, read a newspaper or watched the news at all? Yeah, 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 stuff? I have, I have. You have, you but mean, it's more word of mouth, though. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, what have you learned about it? I mean, you said, you know, you said people have called in tips, like I said, $100,000, if you have anything that might help. People have called in from all over the country thinking they have some idea because they've read something in a, in a, in a news article. Well, I mean, so take your stab at it, man. You're a young man that's trying to get himself financially established. Is there anything at all? Plus, I mean, the decent thing is is that these families want to know. Well, yeah, they want to know why. They want to know why. We all want to know why because it doesn't make any sense. I mean, I can't, I can't imagine it makes more sense, you know, any more sense to you than it does to us. Mm -hmm. But it's these families that want answers. The girl that was killed, Monica Hoffa, her uncle and her dad have called me twice already today. These are people that want to know what's going on and why, why their daughter was killed. Um, and I, I would imagine that you might be able to put together some of the some of the reason why your manager at work was was so concerned about the idea of somebody, anybody leaving a gun around, is because. We're investigating a series of murders, mm -hmm. okay? And so anytime a gun pops up while we have this pattern of murders going on, that is going to raise eyebrows and it's going to freak people out, okay? So that is what drew us to the scene and, you know, the people that responded to the scene, the, what you saw is a direct response to somebody discovering a gun in an area where we have a serial killer on the loose. And that's not, and like I said, the area where you were, it wasn't even like, uh, it's not even considered Seminole Heights, but the response is enormous. Right. right. Because of that case, because that's what's going on. So people immediately associate that, uh, somebody with a gun, with, and, you know, we've got numerous tips. This, this saw this person, I think he had a gun, because there's a serial killer on the loose. Yeah, and you said people at work are already on edge about it. Right. right, so yeah. they're making an association between this gun and these killings, okay? And that gun obviously is, you know, it, it, they know it was in your possession. So what, you know, what are they thinking? Are they thinking you're, you're responsible for these things? Right. I don't, you know, I, I, God knows what's going through their heads. Mm -hmm. God knows what rumors are spreading right now at your former workplace. Right. All right, or your current workplace, that's right, you're still coming back to it. But I mean... And that's where we get involved, just to try to put everybody at ease with all this stuff, okay? But at the same time, God forbid, you know, is that gun that you that you had in your possession, if that's somehow connected to any of this stuff, mm -hmm. you know, what position that puts you in? You know, and, and, and we're, we're going to find out. I mean, is that, is that, does that concern you at all? It does, but uh, I think... So if, if your gun was a match for the gun that we're looking for, what then? Yeah. Would there be an explanation for it? That's what we're trying, you know, trying to establish an explanation. I mean, yeah. you know, if there's any chance that, that gun is, is connected, and that's what we're trying to find out. And any gun that comes down the pike right now is being analyzed for the potential that it might be the gun we're looking for. All right, and there, you know, they, if it is, then it is, then we're going to deal with it. But the you know, most important to us is if anybody can provide any information for anything at all to give something back to make this make sense of at all the worst thing that can happen is that no one gets an answer
Can you imagine that? Can you imagine, you know, your loved one being killed senselessly? Mm -hmm. And then never having an answer as to at least why? You know, why was my son, why was my brother, why was my, my daughter, why were they murdered in cold blood on the streets? You know, what was the reason for it? Yeah. We don't think it's for money. We don't think it's for property, for a robbery. We don't think that it's any of those tangible things that you usually see when you hear about somebody getting killed. It's usually over their wallet. It's over, you know, sometimes it's a phone. And it's still trivial, but it, it's something that can make sense. And, and right now we can't tell the families that. We can't tell them, hey, you know, I'm so sorry to tell you this, but... You know, she was killed because she had a hundred dollars, and that that money yeah, missing. Yeah, robbery is a motivation. Right. It doesn't it doesn't have to sit well with the person, but at least it makes sense on a on a on a, on a warp level. Hmm. This right here this doesn't make any sense to anybody but the person that's doing it. The person that's killing these people has a reason, right? Good or bad, ludicrous or uh, or, or grounded in reality, there is a reason. And the only person that can provide that reason is the person that's responsible. Right. I mean, I'm not going to guess. And, and we know that that reason is not going to make it right. And whoever's responsible knows that the reason is not going to make it right. Nobody's going to find it acceptable. But the reason is what is what is worrying people, what is driving this. Like they, they need to know why these people are getting killed. Nothing's being taken from them. They're, they're in a certain area, right? The Seminole Heights killer, Seminole Heights case, mm -hmm. certain area, and otherwise they are totally unconnected. Males, females, old, young, there's there's absolutely no rhyme or reason as far as anybody else can comprehend. So so what is it that is is causing this to happen? Right. You know, what is it? Is it just you know there there's something driving it and nobody else can possibly articulate it other than the person that's doing it. People can guess, people can speculate, but nobody's really going to know unless the person who's actually doing it explains what it is, what's the reason. It's this. It's had to be done for whatever reason. Um, you know, again, it's something that to, to help people understand because... Right now, it's something that just that, that just doesn't make sense to anybody else, you know. And that that's the hardest part. As can you explain? Did somebody that that knows that their loved one was killed and has no idea, no clue, why? What what was it that caused somebody to take her life or take his life at their age? Um, that's that's the hardest part. That lack of closure is the hardest part for the families. Knowing what it is, what the reason was, again, it's, it's still going to be hard, but there's closure. There's, I can, yeah, I can yeah. shut this door on this because I know what it was. And, and the, the difficult thing is also, I mean, it, it's, this person's taking on a celebrity status. Mm -hmm. You can believe that. This person is, 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 you know, will be talked about all right, for a long time to come, the person responsible. They're going to get some notoriety out of this. There's going to be some celebrity, you know, the the, the talk shows, the the uh, the movies of the week, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, is that what's more, you know, what is what is it? What, what would what would drive somebody to snuff out a human life so coldly and callously? But you know, and, and it's despicable as it is. These people, you know, you've seen on the news. Well, you don't really watch the news, but I mean, you know, it, what you do, it's all. It, that's probably why you don't watch the news, mm -hmm. all right? But I mean, you know, who is this person capable of such a thing? All right? I mean, I, 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 as I asked you. If you're capable, you, you don't think you are. No. Right, I, I'm not capable of something like that. No, I'm, I'm sure that he's not. All right, but we, you know, then, But I do believe that if something happens in somebody's life, that somebody who would not otherwise be capable of it could become capable of it. Okay? Mm -hmm. If there is something that, that occurs, sometimes things just cause you to go down a path that you didn't intend. And sometimes it's something traumatic. Sometimes it's losing a job. So, you know, you lose a job, you lose your house, your marriage falls apart, and all you end up going down this path that you never intended to go down. Right. It wasn't supposed to happen. But because of this event, 
there you go. You veered right off. You were on the highway, you veered right off, and now you've lost everything. I think that that somebody that wouldn't normally be capable of it, if something terrible were to happen to them, some some something could drive them to do this. And that if that is the answer behind all this, the, the answer that everybody's looking for, why is this happening, then again, that goes back to the, the closure, the explanation, the, okay, I mean, Monica Hoffa's father is never going to be happy with that. He's never going to say, oh, that's fine. But he would at least understand. He would at least be able to shut the door on that, close the, close the book, that chapter, because he understands this is the reason and he can move on with his life. But until he understands the reason why his daughter was killed, you're you're a college educated guy. You know, uh, it, you have any idea what? I mean, you know, think for a second. You know, you've talked to a lot of people. You've been involved in a lot of people's lives. You know, from through through sports, through your family, through work. Um, marketing is it's a, or, you know it's management. It's a lot of people interaction. Can you think of anything that would drive a person to do something like this? What, what would what would it take to drive somebody like that? Do you have any any thoughts? Any suggestions? I'm not sure. No idea at all. I mean, do you think it's a sickness? Do you think it's a, uh, a cry for help? Do you think? I mean, what would you? What would, how would you gauge this? I don't know. Loss of a loved one. Somebody. Yeah, traumatic event. Right. You know, Post traumatic stress disorder. You hear from like military vets and things like that. Things that just drive them to, you know, this is a, you know, this is, a, this is unexplainable. But what makes a person do that? Is it something they already? Is it something in their mind that just snaps? I don't know, probably lost a loved one or, I don't know. No, I, no thoughts at all, no, no suggestions, I mean, I, you know, no, I mean, I, I'm reaching there for any help no. at all. No, yeah, yeah nothing. If it, if, if it were a loss of a loved one, we're not talking a third cousin, right? We're not talking somebody, family member in Lake Wales that you've seen once or twice. We're talking about somebody close to you. If you're, yeah, we asked you're you, that we person. Asked you if you lost anybody, somebody thought you might have lost someone close to you, but you said no, you haven't. So I'm not sure. Have you ever lost anybody close to you? I mean, and it's tough when you know. I, I, I really, I, I have, yeah, but I, I haven't lost a mother or a father yet. You know, no one. Have you lost anybody that's been that close to you? Somebody yeah. that raised you. Yeah. Or Who's that? Uh, so somebody in your life that you lost. That oh. close to me? Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I just flushed it right now. Okay. We'll, we'll talk it out now. What are we flushing for? I don't know. I just want to go home. Okay. I've been here so long. No, I, I understand. Okay. Well, before, before we go, read you one more thing okay because I want to be I want to be absolutely certain that you've been given an opportunity like it like many have come before you okay you think you've never been in trouble with the police before right no this one. okay alright you ever you ever uh, you what you a big movie guy uh somewhat you ever had you know what your Miranda rights are uh to a certain extent. You ever, heard them read, you ever had them read to you? No. Okay. All right. I'm going to read them to you now before I ask some final questions and we're done. Okay? Okay. Okay. You have the right to remain silent. You understand what that means? Yes. Okay. If you give up the right to remain silent, anything you say can be used against you in court. Do you understand that? Okay. You have the right to consult with an attorney before you make a statement or answer any question and the right to have an attorney present during questioning. Do you understand that? If you want an attorney but cannot afford to hire an attorney, one will be appointed to represent you before and during questioning free of charge. Do you understand that? Okay. Uh, okay, yes. Is that a yes? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. If you don't understand, by all means, stop me and I'll explain it. Understand up to this point? Yes, sir. You have the right to use any of these rights at any time you want during the interview, and you may stop the interview at any time. Do you understand those rights that I've read them to you? Yes, sir. Okay. Any questions about them? Okay. You flustered right now. We're going to get the results back on that firearm, and we're going to know. But this is your opportunity to explain. If, they, if, those, if there's any chance that that stuff's coming back, and it's going to point in a direction that is incredibly unfavorable to you, you have a chance to explain now before we hit you with the, hey, man, there's no other way. It is. It's scientific, okay? 
The firearms examination is scientific. It's definitive. It tells us, yes, this is the gun, or no, it's not. But if when that comes back, we're going to know. Do those families, do you owe those families an explanation? I'm curious to know, and I know it's tough, but I'm curious to know who it is. Who it is that passed in your life that was traumatic to you? Uh, that was traumatic to me? That, that caused you some trauma, some grief because they passed. They were close to you, and it hurt. It hurt when they passed. They left you on this world fending for yourself when before you had them, and now you don't. And now you're fending for yourself and it hurts. It's tough because they're gone. And maybe you didn't give it. You weren't given an explanation. Maybe you don't have an explanation. Maybe you're wondering why. Who was that person that was close to you that you lost? And you said it was somebody. I can't imagine you had to think about it. All right. Was it an aunt? Yeah. Okay. Was that recently? Uh, it was that recently? Okay. So it was close to you. Yeah. How did she die? Cancer. Okay. Uh, How long ago? A couple years. Okay. Has that been? Weighing on you? Um, not necessarily weighing on me, but that's someone that I've lost. That's that was close. That bothered you. Mm -hmm. Did okay. Did you ever stay with her at any point um, growing up? Did you maybe spend weeks or months or years with her, living with her, as opposed to your my family? Your family? No. No. Um, so when you say that she was close, and that's the person that comes to mind. How so? Like, did you spend every weekend? Did you, what was it that, that made you close to her? She was just a, a part of the family that showed the family that we can succeed in life. Did okay. she believe in you? You talked about a coach believing in you. Did she believe in you especially? She did. Okay. Did you get an explanation for why she got cancer? No. Did anybody explain to you why she died and why it wasn't? Somebody else maybe deserving, or you know, was there any reason given to you? No. Do you owe these families an explanation? We're gonna know. The gun's gonna come back. We're gonna know. Are you responsible for this? No. I, I said, I, now's your chance to offer an explanation to the families if you are. I'm gonna. We're gonna know the answer to that. But that's what I'm saying. Which is why I read you this. Okay. Trey, are the shell casings gonna match? The shell casings that we have from these murders are they gonna match your gun? No. Yes or no? If they do match your gun, where do we go from there? I'm not sure. I mean, they shouldn't match my gun. Okay. okay. You, you didn't fire your gun at these people? No. They You're missing 14 rounds, you're telling us. You test fired your gun, mm -hmm. right? Somewhere, one shot. You bought a 20 round box of ammunition. You're missing 14 rounds, okay? Mm -hmm. You told us later that you went back to the range and shot those 14 rounds at the range when the first one you just fired off in the street somewhere. These people were all shot, okay? There's a reason why there was hysteria over your gun being found at your place of business. Mm -hmm. you, you saw the video that we showed out there. I mean, it's not, it's, not, it's not a far leap to think that maybe people think that's you in the video, is it? No. The yeah. right height, right? Right build. Uh, do you do you own clothing that looks like that? Maybe somebody's seen you in a hooded jacket or something? Possibly. Okay. So I mean, it's not a far leap for somebody to be concerned, be, not specifically because we got a gun here, but because maybe, oh my God, you should be able to talk, right? All the talk in the restaurant. But I'm saying, as we sit here tonight, we're the only guys that are, that, that are going to ask you for that explanation. We are the ones that speak back to the families and say, this is why, because they're going to ask. It's the, it's the first question they're going to ask me. I don't know. All right, so... If, it, if you're responsible for this, I ask that you provide him an explanation. You tell us what it was. Or if it was nothing. If it was just life built up to a point that was, was so overwhelming. If it was some cumulative thing like that, as opposed to a single incident or a single person in your life. Um, but it was something. And again, the the firearms testing is scientific. It is definitive. It's not uh, maybe or maybe not. It's not emotional. It's right. not going to explain anything. It's just going to tell us the fact. And at the end of the day, your phone is in that area. We've explained that to you. You have a gun that is missing 
ammunition, right, that we can't quite account for, and we have four people that have been shot and killed, okay? There are a lot of reasons why we are talking to you to try to get an explanation, because at we, this point... We speak, we speak for the dead. Right. That's and the facts are, this is what they are. They're the facts. I don't understand. The explanation comes from the person that's responsible, the person that, that has it in them to do something like that because of, they can't, maybe they can't explain it. Maybe there is no explanation. Maybe they say, I just don't know why I did that, and I, and I wish I could stop, but I can't. And honestly, somebody that leaves their gun behind is somebody that, that to me, maybe wants to stop. To me, maybe wants that intervention, that, that help, like, I've got to separate myself from this. To prevent that future I loss. I don't want this to happen again. And we know that this is emotionally driven. We know that it is just this built up, and if you can separate yourself from a gun and, and make people safe because you have done that, you've taken that proactive step to give your, your gun to somebody that you trust so that it's not in your hands. That moment of clarity you had. To say, you know what, I can't control myself, but maybe, I, maybe this person, if I don't have it, to I me, here's here's what that here's what that says to me: is the person that does that has a conscience. Person that does that does not really want this in their true mind. Does not want this to happen again. Needs to give that away and separate and and be done and and maybe even, you know, man, I. I know you got to know when you hand somebody something, tell them not to look at it. They're going to look at it. I understand. Okay. Can I just talk to my parents? Your parents? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, if your phone's not working, though, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, will I, am I going to be able to leave? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. He said, you want to leave, you can leave. But he said, I, I, this is the one opportunity that we're giving. If you have anything to do with this, because we're going to know. I know. All and, right? and, if, and if that happens, you may not have the opportunity to say anything again. To us, and we're the ones that communicate to the loved ones. But if, right? if it's, it's a role, if, if that's if you're responsible, then you're easy. you turned over your gun to somebody else because you can't stop, and you know this moment of, of you know I, I'm thinking clearly, I'm going to do this. If you were doing this up to this point, and you stopped yourself by doing that in this room, it's commendable. It's almost a heroic act. The families aren't going to see it that way because they're bitter and angry. Some might forgive, but I see it as look, like this this guy took that step. Sign of conscience, okay. But it's not the monster with, that everybody is portraying to be. Exactly. Somebody with a conscience who makes a conscious decision to do that is somebody that also understands that these families are grieving. Okay? And the person that has the conscience to separate themselves from that gun to try to prevent this from ever happening again is the same person that understands that those families are just hurting and wanting answers and wanting to know. Why is that the person that says before us today? Are you the person responsible for for this? And then are the same person that's responsible for stopping this? Are you that person? No. Did your conscience drive you to leave your gun with Delanda? Did my conscience? Your conscience. Did your conscience drive you to take your gun out of your car, give it to her with the intention of you've already told us you wanted her to to keep it that you you wanted her to. She's a responsible person that you trusted and you wanted her to hold on to that gun. Was that something that was driven by your conscience to make sure that you did not have that gun in your possession? Is that what that act was? Yeah. Was it a conscience-driven act? But for what reason? To, so my brother wouldn't get it. So your brother wouldn't get it. Yeah. Has nothing to do with this right here? No. All right. I mean, so like we're, we're going to find out shortly and then we'll, we'll know. I mean, so we're going to know. I know. Okay. And are you concerned about what that's going to reveal? Uh, to a certain extent, yes, sir. I mean, Why would you be concerned about that? Because you, you guys are saying that basically I've done this. I uh, no, no, oh. no, no. I'm asking you. No, the the, the gun's going to tell us whether or not you did this, right. and we're going to know that. And the gun's either going to say, "No, nah, he didn't," or "Yeah, he did." Trey, listen. If it wasn't you, mm -hmm. the gun results are going to be negative. Yeah, they're going to be. They're going to say it wasn't you. We've run other guns that are gun, you know, comparisons that have been negative because we don't have the gun yet. Okay, mm -hmm. but right now we're running your gun. If it's not you, 
then you have no reason to be concerned because the gun will be negative. I am telling you it's yeah, science. science. Yeah, it is not a guess. Yeah. It is not an estimate. We're not involved in that process. It is a scientific we comparison. With you. It's out of our hands with scientists. Okay. If it comes back and it is, then there is no other explanation for who did it other than it was you. And then you, only you can explain why. If the gun comes back and it wasn't you, or you know that gun's not going to come back and say it wasn't you because, no, I didn't, I didn't shoot these people. And as you pointed out earlier, you had the gun the entire time. No one else had access to that gun. No one else had that gun. Huh. So if that gun fired those bullets that killed these people, it, there's only one explanation, scientifically, as you pointed out, is that person was you that killed these people. Hmm. If it does, if the bullets don't match, or if the, project, the casings don't match, then it wasn't your gun and it wasn't you. It's that simple. If you're concerned, that concerns me. Because you're saying, is, is there a possibility? No. I mean, you being up in that area, it, there's an explanation for that. The, night, the, the times these people were killed, you were up in that area. And, but you, and you haven't told me as to why. Can you explain why? Can you explain why you did a number of searches no, I just want to, I just want on the Sentinel Heights case? I just want to see my family okay. right now. All right, all right. Let me call the state's attorney and then find out what we can do as far as that goes, okay? And then we'll... Do I right. get to leave now? Yeah, give me a sec. Give me, give me two seconds. Sit tight for two just seconds. Hang on, just hang on for one second. He's going to call the state attorney and get, get their blessing on what's going to happen next, okay? I understand this is heavy, man. I get it. to the state attorney and then I can leave? He's going to find out the state attorney is the person who's going to make the decision of whether or not you're free to go. Okay. Can, can I step out real quick? For now, I need you to hang out right there. Okay. There's a reason why you read your rights because we're... we're at a point in the investigation where we need to continue to look at a few things, it's going to be up to the state attorney to determine whether or not you need to stick around while we continue those things. Okay? Because that's when where I, we're at. When I initially came here, you said I'll, I'll be questioned, I'll be able to leave. Absolutely, we did. And there was a point that we reached where this went from voluntary to you're not free to leave, which is why we read you your rights, okay? That's, we, we crossed that point, which is why we read you your rights. We're gonna ter determine, the state attorney may say, yes, he's free to leave. He may say that we need to detain you until we continue some of the other avenues of the investigation, okay? The firearm results are pending, like I said, and they are conclusive. There is no, there's no false positive, there's no false negative, they're going to come back and tell us yes or no. So that may be what the state attorney determines. But Kenny's on the phone right now. Okay, he'll get that, they'll make that call. Do you feel like this is for the best? Do you feel like maybe this is just like handing the gun over? Maybe this is keeping people safe in the future? The fact that we're in this room right now figuring this out, is that going to help keep people safe? What? The fact that we're here right now, mm -hmm. your gun is being tested, mm -hmm. okay? Is that going to prevent people from being in danger of that gun in the future. Of that gun in the future? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, it, I don't think it's going to be, I think it's going to be more things happening. 
you know, more kill, more more killings and things like that. But uh, I mean, from the same person that we're looking for, you think the killings are going to continue? I'm not sure. I don't know. I can't really tell you. Okay. I just want to see my family. I understand. Do you have any other questions for us? No, sir. No. Has anybody else brought this to your attention before? Has anybody else said anything about any possible reason why you could be involved? No. No? Nobody's, none of your family members, none of your co-workers, nobody's, you've talked to a lot of people that have even jokingly said, oh, well, hey, we've got, you know, cops that fit the description, jokingly talking about whether or not they could be the person. I just flushed it right now. I just want to see see my family, sir. Okay. I'm just flustered, man. I just want to see my family right now. You want to tell me why you're flustered? It's just because I've been here so long, and he told me initially I, I come in to, to be, you know, have some questions and things like that, and I'll, I'll be able to leave. I've right. been here a long time. And like I explained to you, initially when we spoke to you, we got your permission, and you agreed to come down here, and I was present for all that. Once we reached a point where... Did your phone have the ability to call out? To call? Yeah, if not, you want to use my phone. I'm going to grab your phone. I'll bring it back to you. You want to use your phone? Would you, like to call? you want to call it to your family? Do I get to leave? Yeah. You, is that what you would? Would you like to leave and call them? Or do you want to call them? Like I said, I'm going to grab your phone. But if you want to call them now, you can use my phone. No, I just like to leave. I want to go see them. I just okay. see them. All right, let me go grab the, your phone, all right? Sounds like the call's been made. The state attorney has said that you're free to leave. All right, so he's gonna get your phone. We'll get your pizza, your wallet. That'll be it. All right. Do you think that's a, a good thing for us to do? What? To let you leave? I think so. You think so? Yeah. It's not going to put anybody in danger if we let you leave? No. No? Okay. If you were still in possession of the gun, would that be dangerous if we let you leave? No. No? You're not, you don't feel like you are a threat to anybody else? I don't know. No? Anything else you want to tell me? I'm sitting here listening. I'm here to listen to it. Okay, I'm not here to pass judgment. I've seen a lot of fucked up stuff in this career. Okay, so there's probably nothing you can tell me that's going to shock me or surprise me. If there's anything that you want to tell me, I'm here listening. All right. Anything you need to get off your chest? You all right. All right. I just want to go on right now. It's just not a long day. Yeah, me too. Thirty. o'clock you start working six o'clock for me been a long day angry nope I cannot take anything that I do here personally can't do it part of that reason is if I did then I wouldn't be able to be professional when I investigate cases like this could can't be done if you take personal, take personal offense to somebody getting killed for no reason. I can't. I gotta maintain some distance. It ain't easy. Not when you got dad and uncle and everybody else calling you all times, you know, several times a week, 
want to know what's going on. Why hasn't it been solved? Why did my daughter get killed? It's not easy, but I can't take it personally, right? If I took all this stuff and internalized it, everything that I've seen in this job, that'd be all bad. All bad. Right? You internalize the wrong stuff and it could make you do something. Right? It could make you act a certain way. So I'm not mad. I'm not mad at you. I don't know enough about this so far you've told me it wasn't you. I haven't seen the results yet. Okay? So I can't be mad at you. However, as much as they want answers, well, maybe not as much, but I want to know too, right? We've been working these cases for two months, so, yeah, what in the world? What causes this? What causes this type of terror in a little neighborhood, right? What drives that? I'm curious as hell, but I'm not angry. Can't be. What about you? Angry? No. Upset? No, I just want to get home and see my family. Okay. I'm just... I would like to do the same, trust me. I'm about four hours past my time that I should be seeing. Or was he going to get on my phone? Or? That's where he was at. I'm not sure. I'll send him a message. What time is it, by the way? It is 8.09. Would you at least say you've been treated fairly Absolutely. since you've been here? Absolutely. Nobody's treated you badly, right? We're trying to go about this the right way, right? You've been very helpful, giving us consent. Search your phone and your car and test fire your gun and all that stuff has been extremely helpful. And we do appreciate that, which is part of the whole process of us being professional, because if we're professional, people tend to work with us, right? So that's, I'm glad to hear that you're, you're not walking away from this thinking that you've been mistreated. You understand the gravity of the investigation, right? The, the correlation that people can make. When there's this type of investigation going on, somebody's found with a gun, that they're gonna make a connection, right? Panic may ensue. At least emotions are gonna be high, mm -hmm. right? But again, like I said before, we can't get worked up. We can't, this group, we can't get emotional. Okay, let's look at the facts. Let's check this, let's check this, let's check this. So it is important to me that you walk away from this not feeling like you were mistreated because there is a reason to it, even though it's time consuming. There's a reason to it. There's a, it's a huge investigation. It's hugely important that we get it right. So, like I said, it's important to me that you don't walk away from this. If we get the results back on your gun and it says, nope, this isn't the gun, it's important to me that you walk away from this going, man, it really sucked that I had to be there for that period of time, but I was treated well, and I understand why. Why they needed to talk to me. Why it progressed to this. When it started with this, right? That's important to me. I don't want you to walk away from this with a bad taste in your mouth. That 
we tried to trick you or treated you badly or anything like that. Okay? And you got fed. So there's that. You guys, you guys did feed me. Maybe there'll be some pizza left. Is there any other reason, anything else that will come to light? Because what, what happens once we get information on somebody, and this is yeah, the first person, we figure out oh, how this person is being brought into the mix. We do a lot of investigation into that person. Is there anything else that's going to come up that could look bad, that could point us towards you being involved? No. Nothing? Mm-hmm. Okay. The, the phone, the content, the locations on the phone, where it's been and when it was there, is there any chance that your phone was near the scenes of these crimes in addition to the other stuff that we've talked about? Family, so. okay. Did he respond to you? No, I haven't gotten a response from him. Can you step outside? Can you step outside with me? Or two. To get some fresh air? Or just no, at this point we can't leave the building. Um, so I can't, I can't take you outside. Again, we've... 
we're at the point where we've crossed the threshold into detaining you as opposed to asking you if you're willing to be here. Um, I'm not sure what he is looking at on the phone. Um, I'm not sure what those results are right now. But at this point, my impression of, of his conversation may or may not have been correct. Um, at this point, I can't, we can't leave the building right now. Okay? That's where we're at. So it's going to be, once I hear something definitive from them about what's going on with the phone, then I'll let you know. But that was part of my, if there's anything else that we need to know about, we got to know. Okay? Because otherwise we're left to, as, as we explained to you before, we're left to look at something and make an assumption or, you know, come to our own conclusions on the evidence that we're finding. All right? So if there is something that we need to know about, like I said, I'm, I'm all ears. Okay? Yeah, that's fine. Put it over. Uh, your uh, your phone is not going with you. There's okay. evidence on that phone that, that we say is stuff we talked about. Okay. You're in the area of the murders at the time of the murders. Okay. Right. I mean, I, you know, yeah, I, I don't I don't know the reason why, other than that's where you were. Mm -hmm. You can provide me no explanation. You've, I, I've I've asked, and you know, fair. You, there's no answer to that. The answer may be simple. Once the ballistic evidence comes back, which should be any minute now, and then it's a, it's going to be clear to everybody as to why. Okay, but that's where we are right now. All right, so we're gonna uh, any second now you're gonna have an answer. I'm gonna have an answer. So I don't get to leave. Not yet. No, no. It's any second but now. Let's come back. But you're I, I explained to him. We've crossed the point. He's he's being detained. That's yeah, why you're ready to leave. Because let's go. This is gonna. I read your rights. Right. Anything you say, you understand your rights. Any questions about your rights? You know that anything you say can't be used against you. Anything you have a right to a lawyer. You know all that stuff. Okay. If you don't, I will repeat it back to you. Okay, if you want to go over this stuff, but you understand your rights. And I'm not going to ask you to say anything you don't want to tell me. I've asked you, I've, you know, pled you on behalf of the families. If you are responsible for this, you know that you are. I imagine you have the opportunity to say something. I'm going to know factually in less than a, a few minutes from what I've been told. And if that comes back with a resounding no, then I'll shake your hand and I'm going to say, I'm sorry for wasting your time and good luck in your endeavors. Okay? Uh, but I, I mean, I, this is my... This, this is my endeavor. This is what I, you know, I'm trying my best, as I'm sure you can appreciate. Because you know what, as Detective Hill pointed out earlier, you're, you're not a bad guy. If this comes back and it is your gun and you did hand it over, I think, to stop the madness, it shows you've got a heart and there's something still salvageable within you. If that's you, then you're going to understand. Okay? Then you are, the fact that you even thought about that, if, if what you're telling me is accurate, that you're, that you're looking out for the well-being of your 12-year-old brother, if that was that's still a responsible human being talking to you now, you're a guy that's got it. You got the right idea and the right attitude going forward. Okay. With all that being said, I know you understand our position in this whole thing. I know if it was your loved ones that we're trying to speak for, you would appreciate that and you would expect nothing less. Okay. That's where we are, and it's simply science at this point. Is it or is it not? And if it's not, no hard feelings, man. However you want to, you know. I, I again, sorry for wasting time. Thank you for your patience and your cooperation through this entire ordeal because it certainly is a sensitive one. It's something we've been dealing with for the last month and a half, two months now. Okay? Every day, every time there's a new lead, it's potential. Okay? And with you right now, it is, it's, it's going to be zero hour. Hey, what do we got here? Is it the gun? Is it not the gun? And that's all I'm waiting to find out. And there's a whole bunch of media down there that doesn't give a shit what we're talking about up here. They just want to know, did we get the guy? Did we not get the guy? I, I, so regardless of how this plays out, when you walk out of here, you know, on your own, you're going to be encountered with that. I don't know how long it's going to be before they leave here, and you're welcome to hang out wherever, you, you know, down there. If it's not you, you can hang out up here if you'd like until they go away. All right? But if it is you, then we got a whole other, you know, issue to deal with. But I'm telling you right now, I've been informed there's a whole bunch of media down there waiting with bated breath. And, I, and I, you know, because it's a big deal. Right? It's a big deal for them for different reasons. It's a big deal for me and him for these reasons right here. Okay, That's why it, the, what we're talking about, if it's not you, man, I don't want to ruin a young man's life. Okay, If it is you, you've already crossed that bridge. You've already made a decision for yourself. 
Right? I can't take you back down that path. I can't. As much as I might like you, I can't. What's, what's been put in motion has been put in motion. That makes sense? Yes, sir. But this other stuff, the media stuff, I got nothing to do. I got no patience for it. Regardless of what the outcome is for you, I don't necessarily want to subject you to any of that. Okay? okay. We, we have to not only speak for the victims, okay, but we still have, we have the opportunity to speak for you, okay? We have the opportunity to document if what you did was, again, moment of clarity knowing that you had to bring this to a stop and you handed that gun over to somebody that you trusted that you knew to be responsible. We can document that. We can document that this is the reason why this came to an end. It wasn't our efforts, it's, clearly. It will be your own words. This is why it stopped. We can't take back what happened. It can't be undone. Okay, we can't bring people back from the dead. All right, but we can document this is why it stopped. You knew it was wrong. For whatever reason, whatever happened, feel free. I mean, if, if there is a reason, if there is a tipping point, if there is a traumatic event, if there is something that prompted this, we're here to document that too. But more importantly is to document that this person regained some sense of what was right and what was wrong in, in that moment brought this gun to somebody that would hold it to, to keep it out of their hands to bring this to a stop. Yeah, that, you, by your actions, your actions up to this point, if this is you, okay, if you're the guy, your actions have spoken more than your words could ever do. You understand that? Yes, it's spoken for the, the, the horror, and it's spoken for the, the heroic act. All right, by your actions. All okay? of this today, is somebody, if you're the guy, that wants it to stop, that wants it to come out. Or wants your story to come out. Good or bad, all that's going to come out for the good. Right now, I could, one of the phone stuff that I, I'm questioning, wait a minute, uh, maybe maybe there's something to this. But only because the location stuff is right there. I don't have an explanation for that, and I asked you for one, and you don't have one either. But I'm saying your actions up to this point will speak louder than any word you could offer. But we've given you the opportunity to offer words as much as you can. Maybe there are no words because you're not the guy. Maybe there are no words because you don't know where to begin. You got the rest of your life to figure it out if you are the guy, how you want to try to explain all this to, to families or to whoever, to your family even. If you're not the guy, then man, this is a big, you know, a big headache for everybody involved. And all I can do is say I'm sorry as much as that would matter to you at this point. Okay, I, I don't know, but I'm, that's all I can do is offer you my, but I, I'm not gonna, re I don't regret what I've done. To try to, to to try to get an explanation, uh, he doesn't regret because this is too important. It's it's worth us trying to get an answer, even if you don't even have it figured out. But I said your actions have spoken beyond what we could ever hope to get in writing or in words. All right, all the way up to this point, and and I said, and we'll know definitively in a very short time. You know what those actions mean. Okay? Yes, is it just an older brother helping to, to keep a younger brother from getting himself into trouble? Is that all it is? That's all it is, man. That's a noble cause, man. I, I feel even worse for, for holding you up any longer. Okay? All right. I mean, you know, you know the outcome before I'm going to know it. You know as you sit here. Mm. Okay? And I, and I, and I think we, we all have believed that from the very beginning, that the, the, the science will speak for itself. I mean, the only thing I could have ever asked for from you is if, it, if, it, if you're the guy responsible as to why, man. What, why? Why a guy like you who seems to have got it together? Why that area? Why, why do it at all? Let alone, why that neighborhood? That, you know, maybe there's a tie to it. Maybe there's something special about that neighborhood. But, but the only person that would know the answer to that would be the person that's committing these crimes. Is it you? We're going to find out. If, it's, if it is, man, I, I just... Whether it ever comes out in court, I, sh I, I would love to know. I can, I'm sure you can imagine that. So. I mean, you want the pizza, man? It's going to be. You want the pizza? Finish the pizza, man. You're, you're no. I mean, you know. 
we're still, so we're all being friendly here to some regard. I mean, we treat you respect, have I not? Absolutely. Despite the hard questions. Absolutely. All right? You've been respectful to me. All right? This isn't, we're not getting nasty with one another, and I don't want to start now. All right? This is, this is our job. This is your responsibility. It's bigger than both of us. Okay? So, there's no reason to make this any more of a, of a dramatic confrontation. Okay? And I appreciate that for what it's worth. And I hope that you appreciate the you know the the manner in which I've treated you. I absolutely do, sir. Even though it's been you know I'm sure grueling up to this point because we've been you know chit chatting about good stuff. You know, so I college basketball. Thank you because I, I I was always curious from coming from a guy that that played the game. All right, but you know how that actually works. I wasn't a basketball player. And I said I was a baseball player, but I love college basketball. I get crazy about you know January, February, March, all that stuff. I was watching games already. I was watching. Matter of fact, I was watching Syracuse and um, Maryland the other night. That was a good game, man. In November was already a good game. So he said, "Yeah, you know, and you you, you played it, man. So you, you'd appreciate it more than me." But you know what 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 makes a guy like that do something like this? If you know if, and you know the answer to that, God, man, I would love to know so I could say, "Hey, this is what." No, he was sorry, but this is why. You know, I don't, I don't, you know. You know, why he decided to stop? What was it that caused him to stop? So, that's my story. But, hey, hey, water, pizza, you know, while we need to sit for a couple extra minutes. He said, we're not, we're not going to treat you like a monster despite what may be because we don't know yet and even if we find out and that's the case and you're being decent I'm going to treat you decent and so is he that's how we that's how we operate okay so I, I, give me a second to make a f couple phone calls because you know I'm going to find out some answers but in the meantime if you want to eat man feel free don't feel like you're holding me back from that right We'll swing right through your head, man. Not much. I just. I just want to. Like I said, I just want to go home. I know you do. But if the blitz just come back and say that that's your gun, that's not happening. Okay? And if that's the case, then I want to give you every opportunity. Every opportunity to provide closure for the families and every opportunity to explain how the person who started this I don't know man maybe that explanation is difficult if, if, if it's not something it's not just that one thing it's not the the one event the one trigger the whatever and it's it's some sort of buildup that you can't articulate I I get it but at the end of the day if the person who started this is also the person who ends this, right? Who ended it by handing over his own gun and then coming in here and doing everything we asked to confirm that you're the guy. Okay? Everything that we asked you, absolutely, absolutely. That is to me, if that's the person that started it, that's also the person that wants to, to put it to a stop. Okay? And we didn't know that it was going to stop. And we didn't believe that it would stop until we intervened. Okay? We really believed that. That whoever this was was going to keep going and keep going and keep going until we caught him. And who knew how high the body count might go? All right? That's what we truly believed. Okay? But if you had... I would have lost my paycheck on that bet if you'd said... The person who started this is going to be the person that puts it into it, okay? But that may have been what happened today. And i got to tell you that for somebody that killed four people for no explainable reason, if that's the same person that put it into it, then there is something redeemable. There is something, there's still something left. That's not a person that's just void of any conscience, that, that just doesn't have anything in them, that's not worth anything, all right? That is a person who recognizes what happened was wrong. It needs to stop. How do you put a stop to it? You hand over your gun, 
and you give the police everything that they ask for to confirm that yes, you got the right guy, and it needs to stop, and this is the only way it's going to stop. Yes or no? The only way that it's going to stop is no access to the gun, right? And in police custody, nobody else dies. Okay, you understand your rights. Right? I've explained them to you. You have no questions about them at all. Oh, you understand your rights to remain silent, your rights to an attorney. Did you want to review them again before I ask you any more questions? Do you understand them? Yes, I want to be clear about that. Yes, sir. Right? Because it's the gun. Okay? You murdered those people. The jacket that you were wearing on that video that we showed you that you claim not to, to be able to identify, it's in your car. Okay? Your phone will put you right there at specific times. This is science, man. This isn't me making this shit up. This is science. This is technology. The stuff that you two know stuff about that I know nothing about. Okay? Is that you? But I, I gotta ask you... No, I mean, I, that's a rhetorical question. We know it's you. Trey, look at... We've got a picture of your face in this video. Mm -hmm. Trey... Do you see it? For everybody that is, is, is listening... Everybody that is going to want to hear the answer. More importantly, the four families. Can you please tell us why? What set this into motion? Like, what started this? How did this ball start rolling? To the point where... You got my attention, man. You have the floor. I, I just... Uh, I'm, I really just... I, I just want to speak to my family. I understand that, and you're right. And you're going to be given that opportunity at some point. Right now, it's not that point. I can't. I can't offer that up. I don't know. But I mean, why? I just don't know anything else to say. I just want to, I guess, talk to my attorney and talk to who I need to talk to. Okay. All right. All right. I, I hope, man. Listen. Only, I hope we get an answer. All right. Because I'm telling you, it's the only question that they're going to have. The who we've answered for them. The why can only come from one person. It can't come from me. I can't even begin to guess. All right, and I'm going to keep working through this investigation, and maybe I'll come up with an answer. But right now, I don't have one, and they're going to want one. And I, you know, and I, and, I, and I wish we could give them something. And I'm telling you, they're not going to think fondly of you, especially if you're not offering up an answer. But that's with you and your conscience from here on out. You've done, like I said, your your actions have spoken volumes. And we can appreciate that. Him and I sitting here that have done this job for a long time. Yes, sir. Okay? That we've seen some horrible things. Not to this level, but we've seen some bad stuff. But what we've learned over the time is we don't always get to know why because no, they don't want to tell us. Or they just, they're, you know, they're ashamed. And it's tough sometimes to swallow that. But it's more of a personal gain than anything else to want to know why. For the families, it's personal. Very personal. It mean it's it's they have skin in the game literally. It's their loved ones that were dead out there, that they're not coming back and have no reason as to why. And the one person that can provide it I hope provides it to some degree. It's not gonna make sense to everybody. But I, I mean the who we're answering for them right now. Oh, so good. Okay. You get sick, get your trash can. Yeah, use it, use it, man. Photos. Photos. Yeah. Now, privacy and tech. Yeah. Go ahead and get that. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, I mean, while we're, you know, I just make sure you, you if you gotta get sick, let me know. But we're gonna have a uh, crime stick photo photograph you, okay? I'm not gonna say any more. I'm not gonna ask any more questions. You ask, you know, you ask for your attorney. That puts it into the game. Yeah, that's horrible to say. It's not a game. It's not a basketball. It's a game. This is human life. This is tragedy. This is real tragedy. It's 8.38 p.m. I'm stopping.